What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to part two of our uh, War of the Spark set review. I'm here with Rob, and uh, hey. Rob is eating. This is a this is actually a gift that was sent from from uh, subscriber and and bro Pat and uh, Kerwit. Uh, these are some sriracha mayo potato ch sticks. chips, little potato sticks. They're so good too. He sent me a care pocket care package from Japan, and uh, these were included. These sriracha mayo. Try them. They do. They're really good. All right, I'll give, I'll give one all. a go. You're gonna want more. Hmm, that's They're not bad. Very, very good. That oh, don't bad. forget to change the. Bottom I do have to, to change the bottom two. to part two, so then you guys don't get confused. All right, first card on the crop invader. I guess we do have some zombie minotaurs here, like uh, like it's Ixlon. but it doesn't get pumped. It is a two-two for three, a zombie minotaur warrior. As long as it's your turn, it gets it has first strike. It's pretty good. Maybe. Sacrifice another can pump itself two power. Sacrifice another creature, it gets plus two plus O oh until end of turn. Dude, spam homo, are you okay, man? I don't I don't know what's going on. Like right that jeez. Nah, it's just a really aggressive human being, it's I Easter. guess. You need to calm down. Alright. Uh blind blast. Three mana, it deals one damage to target creature. That creature can't block this turn. You guys really stretching? Okay, well, my, what? Shut up! <laughs> like what? Bye. Bye. All right, then go. Then, then, no one's give him the tombstone. The tombstone meme. Bye. <clears throat> oh my god! Draw a card. Uh, I wonder if target creature can't belong to our card. No. Three mana is a bit much. Instant nice. It's more than I'm asking for here. Bolt bend. Four mana. It costs three <laughs> less if you control a creature with power four greater. That's not bad. No, that's pretty cool. Change the target of target spell or ability with a single target. Eh, it's all right. That's like a getcha. Gotcha. If you can smoke weed, any planes are. I don't smoke weed, so I couldn't tell you. Same. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I don't know. I don't know the experience in general, so I wouldn't be able to customize the experience with a planeswalker. Uh, this card's fine. If if you're looking for a kind of wild ricochet effect, I think it's fine. The rate's good, um, but how about a beer? I don't drink either. I am a. If I could have a beer with anyone, I'm a man of few vices. It's got to be Gideon. Bond of Passion. Five, six mana uh, for ch 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 gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature. It gains haste until end of turn. Bond of Passion deals two damage to any other target. So it's an act of treason and shock, and it's just junk. It costs six mana. It's all right. How, mean, about a, how about a cup of tea? It's too strong. Who would you have a cup of tea with? Karn, maybe? I mean, I'd like to chat with Karn. Like, I think Karn would have some cool conversations. But, uh... The card's junk. Yeah, six mana is way too much, man. Oh, so, no, you didn't make... No, no no discomfort whatsoever. Uh, the no, only, I was watching. Was the really only discomfort was that, like, you asked, like, four times. So I was like, oh, he's really trying to... He's really trying to get an answer here. <clears throat> but, yeah, yeah, I think Karn would probably be an answer. Just ban that dude. Just literal ban that dude. Seriously. It's... Yeah. What was the last message? Like, if you don't drink some nonsense? It, it was, it was, there was some really bad words in it. God, like, I don't, really, what's your, like, oh God, I just don't understand. I feel like, I think if you, sh I think you should wake up every day and evaluate your behavior and ask, am I making the world and the people around me better or worse? Am I a net positive or a net negative force in the world? I think those are literally the only comments he typed the entire time. And too. like, if you literally just wake up and you make other people miserable and you're just a, just a really, just a, a net negative in the in in your life, probably reevaluate your behavior. I guess it was ridiculous. Burning profit one any red free one three. Whenever you cast a non creature spell, it gets plus one plus zero oh, and scry. It seems borderline playable in, in some sort of like spell and creature. Like uh, what was the the card you talked about earlier with defiant strike? Um, the type of creatures where you target them and you get an effect. What was it? The ability called heroic. So, so heroic in a. <laughs> In, in a deck that's like creatures and spells, this isn't really that bad. Scry is pretty relevant, and you get to pump it at the same time. All right, skip it. I know. I think it's all right. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of precedent for cards that like, if no matter you know every time you cast a spell, this happens, right? So like, like I mean, there's a lot of you know flame wake. What's the flame wake addict? Is that what it's called? The the one two that like has prowess. Like plus one plus zero is basically just good enough. For, it's like basically just prowess, right? Yeah. So I mean, like this Sorry, is got a three butt. this is fine. Like, and also the s infinite scries is just good, right? Like, mm -hmm. if you get to scry for it three, four times, 
casting like you know if you're just casting like taxi and probes in modern it's pretty sweet yeah just kidding that card's banned even in legacy chain whip cyclops five mana for a four four target creature can't block this turn you have three butt rob geez yeah got him how could you tell sorry about your three butt oh oh boy chandra fire artisan four mana for a four loyalty planeswalker, whenever one or more loyalty counters are removed from Shonda Fire Artisan, she deals that much damage to target opponent or planeswalker. So whenever they attack her, just go straight face or planeswalker. Sure. Or you can be like uh negative seven XL the top seven cards of your library. You lose seven life. They lose, they lose seven life, right? Um XL the top plus one XL the top card of your library you play at this turn. This is actually a nice take on like, you know, uh outpost outpost siege, outpost yeah. what is, is that what it's called? Yeah, outpost siege is the one that lets you see an extra card. Yeah, or like uh Vance's blasting cannons or whatever. So I mean this is that's that's Chandra's ability. She always has that ability. Correct. Which yeah. is nice to see it on the rare version of her because sure. it's like you're still getting that you're still getting that ability. You know what I mean? So that's cool. Um yeah, I think this is playable. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's good. I agree. <clears throat> Chandra's Pyrohelix. Two damage, two mana. Deals two damage divided uh, as you choose among one or two targets. I think it's fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, get, be, it's like it's just Fork Bolt for, for two, but it's an instant, so you're, you know. Is Fork Bolt a uh, sorcery? Fork Bolt is a sorcery, yeah. yes. There's one mana sorcery that deals two damage. Mm -hmm. But also, Fork Bolt, is it... Two targets, or you have to do you have to do two targets, or can you just do two to one? No, target? it's it's uh, divided as you choose. Choose divided as you choose. Choose. Chandra's <laughs> Chandra's triumph. One and a red, uh, an instant speed. It deals three damage to target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls. It deals five if you control Chandra. This card's fine. Instant, not bad. I mean, it's three. It's like an it's like basically a braid, but instead of destroying an artifact, you can also shoot a planeswalker. Mm -hmm. And if you have a planeswalker, you're probably just gonna kill a planeswalker. You're probably just gonna kill something. Anything you target. Yeah, so that seems fine. It is literal twin bolt. Is it twin bolt? Yep, that is true. Okay. Yep. I don't know magic, so it is literal twin bolt. Cyclops. Well, let me. Yeah, yeah, it's literal twin bolt. Oh no, it's not. Twin bolt says deal two damage divided as you choose among one or two target creatures and or players. Uh, so back when twin bolt was created, it was probably you know you could deal to players, but that would just go to planeswalkers. Uh, now, oh, Twin Bolt says one or two targets. It yeah, was eradicated. Dang, yeah. it's just Twin Bolt. Fudge. Cyclops Electromancer. Five mana for a 4 2. When it enters the battlefield, it deals X damage to target creature and opponent controls where X is the number of instants and sorcery cards in your graveyard. Is this good for the Drake's deck when you have like seven? You're just like playing a 4 2 for five, but it's just like. It's literally a five mana Ravenous Chupacabra in that I mean, deck. It, it could be. Oh, does it do it to a creature? Uh, yeah, target, target creature. creature and opponent controls. Yeah, it just kills any creature. Five is too steep. But four is okay? I mean, you get four power. You're basically going to kill... Like, that deck can kill all of their blockers, and it's just another four power on board. Kill all their blockers? How? Because the, the deck is playing, like, Searing Spears and Lava Coils and stuff. Mm. I'm saying you could... the Not this creature. The deck can kill all of their creatures. Mm -hmm. Boot to the head. Thank you so much for the resub. Welcome back, buddy. Really appreciate it. So, I mean, like, I don't know. It seems good. I think it seems... I think it's, like, a fine as a one or two of, right? Like, I mean... Oh, Villy with the gifted sub. My God. My God. He's ridiculous. 161 gifted subs in the channel. That's, never, that's reasonable. Never seen this card. Demolish. Destroy an artifact or a land. You could do either? Wow, that's crazy. This is playable. Devouring Helion. Three mana for a 2-2. As it enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice any number of creatures and or... So it has Devour. Look, it's a little on the nose, wizards. Uh, <laughs> you may sacrifice any number of creatures and or planeswalkers. If you do, it enters with twice that many counters. So if I, if I sack two creatures, it's a 6-6. Six, six. You really have to have creatures you want to sacrifice, right? Like, yeah. if you have things mm -hmm. like one ones that when they die, you can make a 1-1, one, one, and then you sacrifice that. Like, you know, those kind of creatures. I forgot what they're, if, they're, if there's, like, a term for that. I don't know. Anyway, I don't hate this card. It's going to have to find a... Should have haste. It should have haste. Dread Horde Arcanist. One and a red for a 1-3. This card seems good. Uh, with Trample... Whenever Dread War Arcanist attacks, you may cast target instant or sorcery card with converted mana cost less than or equal to Dread War Arcanist power from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. If that card would be put in your graveyard exile, obviously. So, whenever it attacks, it doesn't have to deal damage. Whenever it attacks, mm -hmm. you can cast an Opt. You can cast a Lightning Bolt. You can cast... Uh, Are you just naming one mana cards? Forked Bolt. Jitaxian Probe. Well, it's, I'm thinking like modern, no. modern mostly. 
You said fork bolt. Because I was thinking modern. Oh. It's the legal and modern. I know. Okay. Is that what you think of legacy with that? Well, I just, people don't play it. Oh, it's ancestral vision. Oh, that's gas. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, if you're able to buff this guy, which they're implying when they give it trample. Collision Colossus. Um, Two mana cast a five drop into the And then sorcery. next turn you can Collision Colossus him again. What? And then target the Collision Colossus. What? Yeah, that's gas. I like it. That's a lot of damage. Hence why he has trample. I don't know. This card seems fantastic. I agree. This, this card is, is like a this is like a reverse Snapcaster Mage. It's a little more restrictive, but it's also like repeatable. You don't have to pay the mana. Yeah, you can literally lightning strike something and then find a way to to make this dude larger. It's like Judith. Closed. If you run this card in black with Judith, this lets you fi- cast all your bolts again a second time. That's just really good. This card's really good. I think it's really good. Yeah. All right. Dread Horde Twins, four mana for a two two. When Dread Horde is that is that the name of our it's band? Dread Horde Twins. Dread Horde Twins. <laughs> is that the name of our WWE <laughs> outfit? It could be. When Dread Horde Twins enters the battlefield of mass two, so you're getting two two twos. Zombie tokens you control have trample. This is the trample version. It seems like there's a. a it, these are kind of like slivers where like there's 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 a different creature in each color that gives an ability right, and um. This one is obviously trampled. I, you know, you're not going to... It's still four power for four mana, but you're probably not going to be playing it in Constructed. Finale of Promise, the red finale. Arguably one of the better ones, but uh, still interesting. You may cast up to one target instant card and or up to one target sorcery card from your graveyard, each with, each with converted mana cost X or less without paying their mana cost. So again, another way to play Ancestral Vision, just like Electro Dominance. The, this set is giving us a lot of red, red cards. Red, red X cards. Uh, this this block, so to speak, is giving us a lot of red red X cards that allow us to cast ancestral visions, which is kind of funny. Um, and uh, if a card cast this way, we put in your graveyard, exile it, obviously, because that's just what happens. If you have if X mana. is ten or more, if you have twelve mana, each of those you cast them, you copy them twice. So you're basically paying playing six spells instead of two. <clears throat> I don't think this I... at all. It's, it's it's super dependent on other things. This, I don't think this is any. Good. I don't think it's a bad card. I think it's very restrictive. It's not like it's not like a draw two card that you're just gonna stick in your deck because you can. This is a card that's like I can build around this. Sure. You know what I mean. So I don't know. Like it's just so expensive. It's with wilderness Revelation and flashland. That doesn't yeah. work. It's a sorcery. Well, flashland or Tef. Well. Oh, Flashland. Or Tefri, yeah. sure. Yep. But, like, I don't want to have to work that hard for this card. Because I'm, an all, I'm also going to have to you, have the spells just, in the graveyard. We, yeah, we just named 12 cards in our deck that don't that don't actually do anything for this card. So I have to have Flashland, Tefri, Wilderness Reclamation, Final, Finale, Finale Promise. Promise, and two cards that I want to cast in my graveyard. That's like a yeah. six-card six combo. Anyway, not one of the better ones. So what's the only playable one? The green one? Oh, yeah. All right. Goblin Assailant, 2-2-4-2. Two, two, Goblin Assault Team, 4-1 for 4, Haste. When it dies, put a 1-1 counter on a creature control. That's. I like the fact that it is Haste, though. That's kind of cool. That is. That's super cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look. It dies to this one drop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's hilarious. Hey, 4-1 with Haste. Wow, that's pretty good. Oh, it's dead. Oh, it's dead. Also, even if they manage to kill this, you still got a 1-1 one, one that blocks it, so that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> you have to kill this twice in order to get through with your 4-1 four, four haste. Fantastic. Oh, Either way, a 1-1 one, one for 1, uh, that when it dies, you get a 1-1. One, one. And it's This a is exactly what I was talking about for the Devouring guy, where you sack this dude, put get two your... counters on it, and then you still get a 1-1 one, one out of it. Yeah, you get your black yeah, mass. Yeah, that's pretty good. Get your black mass? Mm-hmm. Wow, that just sounds cancerous. <laughs> Hearthfire. One and a red as initial cost to cast it. Sack a creature, planeswalker. It deals four damage to any target. That's all. Four damage to any target's all right. I mean, for two mana, that's actually not bad. Yeah, four, four to face is that's four to a face good deal. Is, right. The fact that it's not just creature or planeswalker. Yeah, that's pretty good. I think this is actually pretty good. I like that. Like in in limited, we're paying like five mana to do Again, that. Again, it's an instant. So if they go to kill your guy, you can respond with Hearthfire. If they go to kill your planeswalker, you can respond with Hearthfire. This is think of Shrapnel Blast. Mm. Shrapnel Blast is sacrifice an artifact yep. to deal five damage. This is sacrifice a creature or planeswalker to Goblin deal four. Goblin grenade. That, I mean, that's true. Sure. It's it's Shrapnel Blast, Goblin grenade. Instant speed, just better. Except Goblin is one, and Sorcery, Serapnel Blast is two, and an instant. So my, my comparison was a little better. I actually haven't seen this card till now, and I think this is actually a pretty I good card. Good. Yeah, this is a really good card, actually. If you're playing red, like you probably don't care about your creatures dying, and there's a lot of ways you can just sacrifice the guys that's dying anyway. 
That's, that's yeah, they just good. should have called this lit on fire. <laughs> they should have been like, dudes on fire. That would have been a better name. Honor the God Pharaoh. Two and a red as initial cost to cast this spell, discard a spell of discarding card. Tormenting voice with a mass. Yes, which I think is good. Except it's... You're paying one more mana for 1-1? One, one? Yeah, no, yeah. I think it's worse now. <laughs> I was thinking it was an instant, so... Yeah. But I mean, like, that's... Yeah, being a sorcerer is rough. Ilharg the Razebor. Five mana for a 6-6 six, six Trampler. Oh. We're good. Whenever Ilharg the Razebor attacks, you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking. Return that creature to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. So it gives a creature dash. Yes. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that if you flash in like an Emrakul Won't work. or a Primeval Titan, you're not going to get there whenever this creature attacks abilities um, because you're not you're not announcing them as attackers. <clears throat> They're coming into play already attacking. <laughs> um, so. Pu Puppy Dog Eyes says it's Bebop from Bebop and Rocksteady. Yeah, it's from Bebop from Turtles. <laughs> yeah. You're right. That's funny. If there's any hippos in the set, we can do a rock star. There was. We, we saw a zombie hippo. That's true. Mm. Was he a hippo? or No, it was he a was hippo. A, no, he was a rhino. No, there was, no, it was a zombie hippo. No, it was a rhino and a warthog. How much do I bet? I will bet you $100 that they were... Hold on. It was a rhinoceros and a warthog. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I thought... I'm sorry. No, I the one we you. went past was yes. a hippo. Yes. Yeah, okay. I I'm telling you, you Rocksteady was a rhinoceros. It was a rhino. Correct. Yes. Dang it. I almost lost 100 bucks. Kind of. Maybe. When it dies or is put in exile from the battlefield, put it in its owner library third from the top. Yeah, I was literally about to Google uh, Bebop and Rocksteady to show you that it was a rhino and a hippo because that was what that was what I thought we were arguing about. Il Ilharg plus Master of Pokes? Oh, that's interesting. Okay, but see, one thing to consider is that this does get Enter the Battlefield abilities. And I wrote about an article, uh, I wrote about Niv Mizzet Reborn this week at CoolStuffInc.com, and you can check that article out now. Um, wow. And the article I wrote was trying to find ways to take advantage of Niv Mizzet. And um, I think this card is actually a pretty sweet addition as like a one of, because if you play this guy and attack with it and you put a Niv Mizzen into play, you still get the trigger. You get the enters I'm, the battlefield. I'm, I'm wondering how we can how we get turbo treasures. So we can run um, what's the enchantment that gives them haste and can't be countered, and then you can run like Nikia gives them haste and can't be countered. Yeah, yeah, the card that we won we three would the draft with that I was like, are you sure you want to play Rhythm of the Wild? Rhythm of the Wild. So you give also, this you can Domri rated too. Oh, that's the one too. Yeah, anything. You, yeah, that's true. And then I was thinking like you can run Nikia because you can use that for your mana, but I mean I guess it's not necessary because you need one mana of every color for for the new Niv. Yeah. Okay. That's irrelevant, but but that's that's actually really interesting. Being able to cheat out your your um, God, so you'd be attacking for twelve damage. You get the six trigger, flying six and then you trample, look at the top ten. And you just netted three and or you four more a, cards, yeah, and then you just draw that's all the cards. Stupid. And then the Niv Mizzet comes back to your hand anyway. We have to try and build a deck like that if on Tuesday. Oh, I'm just gonna throw one in. I'm just gonna throw one into the deck I have and see okay. if that works. But like, yeah, this card seems super sweet. It's also just a six five tr six six trampler for five. That's very very hard to deal with. Yeah, so. yeah, that card's aces. Invading Manticore, six mana for a four five. This is a worse deal, as as you can tell. Uh, when it enters the battlefield of mass two, this is I mean four five and a two two for six is not bad. Uh, this is a great limited card. Mm -hmm. Pretty good, but uh, I don't think it's competing with this guy. I think if you open this and this, Jesus. you're probably I think you should lean towards this one a little bit. But uh, make depends sure on you, what you have. Already. Make sure you weigh your options. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Jaya, venerated fire mage. I love how Jaya is such an old lady. I was literally going to say that. I'm look how look how look how aged Jaya is. She she honestly even kind of looked that like that way in the last one too. And uh, five mana for a five loyalty planeswalker. If another red source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals that much plus one instead. So your lightning strikes deal four, your shocks deal three. This is actually that's a good ability, it's but five mana. right, like how many spells are you going to have and left? It doesn't even affect, affect herself. That's what I don't like about Jaya. It. Venerated fire mage deals two damage to any target, so with three, right? No, it says another. That's weird. Why would it? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, it, I don't like that. I guess she doesn't want it. I guess they don't want her to lightning strike. For five mana. You said four, five, and a two, two for six, but at this time it's probably, I mean, maybe, but I mean, maybe not. I think it depends. I don't think there's like a, I don't think there's, I don't think we've seen enough of this format to know like you're already going to have a mass token. I also don't think there's, and we also, we also talk negatively, really that many as well. We also talk negatively about pumping your mass tokens and feeling like it's not as good as having the body in, in the format. You, you never know. It could be good to have the person with the giant mass token may be the person who's winning, you know, having a six, six versus a four, four could, could be extremely relevant. I mean, they didn't reprint colossal dread mall, so it probably attacks freely. Should have been too good for a limited if she will. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, having two bolts. I think that's, I think that's true. But five it's just, mana? It just seems so. interesting. Really? Five, two bolts for five mana? Over two turns? Jaya's greeting. 
Blast. Uh, one and a red. It deals three damage to target creature and scry one. Can we appreciate the art on her face? She's just so happy. She's, She's having a good time. She, that's like the most grandma smile you could ever have. You're the most grandma <laughs> smile. But so this is this is a card that's actually worse, right? Like this is like I mean we're looking at all these like all the planeswalkers have like their own also they also have their own also cards. And uh, some of them are better. Like Liliana was much better. Like the Jace one is much better. And like the Jai is this like this still isn't that bad in limited. Sure. Oh, in limited, I'm good. never gonna oh. not play this. Yeah, correct. Okay. I'm talking about like this is not gonna be constructed because you no, just have lightning close. strike. Like yep. I'd rather just deal damage to your face. Yep. Or destroy an artifact. That's what you prefer. Than That's fine. One. I agree. That's fine. You do what you want. I like this card a lot. I Franco, love this card. Ten Street Kingpin is a one two for three. Whenever it attacks, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it, then create a number of 1-1s one, equal to its power. So the first attack, you're already attacking with a 2-3, and you're making two 1-1s. One, like, Krenko is notorious <laughs> for a making three, a three, bunch three. of goblins. I mean, it's 3-drop. And uh, this just keeps on going. I love this card. This All card grandmas are sick. just biding their time to fire blast a zombie in the face. That sounds about right. <laughs> That sounds about right. I think this card's fantastic. I, I agree. like this card a lot. This hundred percent will find a home for sure. Yeah, I, you mean like, like even just in mono red? Like there were t a, a lot of times uh, the mono red decks in the sideboard were running the uh, Legion War Boss because if unchecked, it wins the game by itself. That's all this card does. I think this goes wider. This is just this is just a better version of Legion War Boss because it progressively gets larger and puts the same amount of power on the battlefield. Well, the one problem is that you're going to have to attack with this, where you don't have to attack with Legion War Boss. You get a one one token out of it, but I don't think that one one token is relevant if they destroy it. You know what I mean? Oh, I see what you're saying. You get the one one regardless, so you, you don't, don't have, have to run it behind, into something. Right. You can sit behind yeah, it and be like, sense. okay, I don't have to risk this. I still like this better. But the problem is if they have something that's gonna eat your tokens or eat your eat your Legion Warbots, they're probably just eating the tokens anyway. So yes. it's it's kind of hit or miss. Mizium tank, one green green, and by that I mean red red. Mm -hmm. Uh for a three two trampler, whenever you cast a non creature spell, it becomes an artifact creature and gets plus one plus one. So without it without any reason to like you can actually play this in deck with no ways to crew it. And then you just cast, like, Lightning Strike their face and attack with a 4-3. That's actually not bad. No, this card's really good. I think this card's very good. The fact that it dodges Sorcery Speed Removal. I like this card a lot. Um, you also, you can stack the tokens in such a way that you can actually attack with this in Legion Warboss for the first time. You can Mentor onto this. You can put his 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 uh, his ability on the bottom. Correct. And that, yeah. Make it a 2-3 with Mentor, yep. and then make it a 3-4. Three, three, four, four and then it's ability Franco. triggers as well. Yeah. After. That yep. seems good. This card seems really good to me, actually. This one? Yeah, it's a, it's a good way to dodge to dodge sweepers. And the nice thing is it's a 3-2, so like... No, a fourth... Well, it attacks Well, I'm saying like it's a 3-2 without without being a creature, so they can't kill it until you actually activate it. Yep. Um, the thing is, it's not a May ability, so no matter what spell you play, it will activate this, and you don't have a choice. But um, eh, it's a red deck. It's chaotic, man. You, you can't really control it. You can't it. control it. Yeah, it just you does what it wants it. to do. It does what it wants. Nahiri's Stone Blades... Uh, I one like this. one in a red up to two target creature gets plus two plus two. Really? Yep. Yeah, I, I mean, think there's gonna be so. This like, is just worse than the than rummaging than the one from uh, Kaladesh, right? No, I think it's the same card. No, that one gave plus four plus oh. Oh, and to yeah, it. you're right. You're right. To one or two creatures. I it, forgot. It's what it's not called. rummaging. I can't remember, but I know what you're talking about. You had the choice to give a creature plus four plus oh or, or, two, or creatures. two creatures plus two plus yeah, yeah, oh, for right? two man instant. It was the same. same. I, I still think this is good. There was a time where red decks and back in that time where red decks converted, they were trying to adapt to the metagame, and they switched to playing that spell to jam critical damage through. And I think this card with the with the feather, I mean, it's with just... With the feather? <laughs> Stop calling it the feather. Isn't that what it's called? I don't, it's literally called feather. Yeah, but not the feather. You don't call it with the... But <laughs> It's like if you have someone's name, the Gideon, with the Gideon. I don't know, it's just weird. It's weird. You're weird. You're because weird. I want to say the feather card. With, you could just say with feather. Sure. Like I said, like with Nissa, right. with Gideon. Scrub that. Scrub it? You can play this card with... Yeah, scrub that from the video. You can oh, you can play this God, card with, fe with, with Feather. There you go. You know what I meant? All right, we're done here. Oh, ooh, yeah. Or you can play it with the, with the Goblin, with Cranko. And he poops out four dudes. Neheb, Dreadhorde Champion. Four mana for a 5-4 Trampler. When it deals combat damage to a player or Planeswalker... You may discard any number of cards. If you do, draw that many cards and add that much red. So I can discard three. I'll add three red and draw three cards. This is actually very good. Until the end of turn, you don't lose mana as the phases end and stop, which is why you're able to use this mana in your second main phase. So if I play this on it's four... Pretty good. On turn five, I'll have five mana, and then I can add up to, like, let's say three mana. This should have haste. So I can get eight mana on turn... Why? I'm, someone said I should say that about every card. Well, it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense here because, like... 
It's You've already spent your four mana. The turn yeah. comes into play, so you're not going to be able to play anything else. Uh, uh. Hmm. I actually like the fact that it says you can discard any number of cards. It doesn't make you discard your entire hand and then draw that much. Hmm. Yeah, you can just choose. You got to feel bad for Neheb, though. I, I was gonna. Say, I was literally thinking that because I'm like, he's always has he's such always unplayable cards. Be, well, he's always trying to be a, like. It feels like he's in the set with the gods. He's the legendary creature that has like. He's he's really strong. But he's just not God tier. He's not. He's not strong enough. Not strong enough. Anyway, you wouldn't be able to play so because uh, yeah, right. But you're. But I mean, you're adding two or three mana, so like, who cares? Like, the bird. That's what. Yeah, obviously, it adds more. Raging Crunch. Uh, two. <laughs> that's what Rob was doing with those chips. He was doing some raging crunches. I'm sure they heard me. Uh, two and a red for a four three. It can't attack alone. It gets lonely. Yeah, that's the end of that though. Samet's Sprint, one and a, one red. Target creature gets plus two, plus one, and gains haste until end of turn, and you can scry one. There's a lot of, like, just scry tacked onto things. This, in this card set. should have haste. The card should have haste? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's an instant. That's kind of like having haste, right? True. You want the card to have haste, and then it gives haste, too? Yes. That's double haste. I want to be then. able to use it the turn it comes out. That's a good idea. <laughs> you could use it the day it comes out, thanks to... Uh, Anyway, five mana for a five loyalty Sarkon the Masterless. Ooh, that's, if that's not foreshadowing, I don't know what it is. Whenever a creature attacks you or a Planeswalker you control, each dragon you control deals one damage to that creature. I don't like that because it's kind of overkill. I'm like, how many dragons do I have that are making You probably already winning the game if you got a bunch of dragons. Right, if I have three dragons out and you're able to attack me... Something's seriously wrong with that board I state. don't care about the three damage it's dealing, I'll be honest with you. You got a bunch of bunch of enchantments tacked onto your dragon. Plus one, until end of turn, each Planeswalker you control becomes a 4-4 four, four red dragon creature and gains flying. That's actually pretty sweet. Uh, negative three, create a 4-4 four, four dragon. It's interesting, it's a rare, but you can only use the negative three one time. Hmm. I don't think this card's any good. I think I want it to be good. I, th I like the way it's... No, I don't think it's good. Sarkin's always like that. Right. It's eh. never really good. Sarkin's always like so. He's trying. He's, he's like he's one so tier close, above dude. Neheb. He's so close. He's like the redheaded stepchild of the of the gods and the uh, of the planeswalkers. That's what I feel like. You, you're the redheaded stepchild of my life. Sarkin's catharsis, five mana. It deals five damage target player. Now this is normal. It's just lava. It's just lava axe. Except it's an instant. It can hit planeswalkers. It's better. It's strictly better. It is strictly better. Yeah, that's twice we could say that. God, but that doesn't make it good. No, nope. strictly better, but not strictly good. better than a zero can still be. Whenever a half. you cast a non-creature spell, put a one-one counter on spell gorge or weird. Like this card, really? Two, two for three. I, I do. I don't think it's terrible. There's a there's a Merfolk that has lava axe can hit walkers. Is that true? Yeah, because it hits a target player, so they got eroded. Everything, every anything, oh, so it's only yeah. better because of the instant. Yeah, all right, still. Oh better. my god, look at that axe! Look at that art from Portal. No, I don't care. Oh, is it the one that looks like straight ahead? Yeah, that's a good one. No, it's not. All right, whatever. I don't care. Shut up. You show you shut up. I'll fight you right here on the street. Oh, are what? you gonna say? Are you gonna say what you normally say? This hey, it's your boy. It, that's not my boy though. This is no one's boy. It's his. It's your boy. It's your boy. It's your boy. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Oh, Tybalt, Rakish Instigator, three mana for a five loyalty planeswalker. Your opponents can't gain life. Don't even try. Don't even try to, to move your life to upward. Negative two, create a one one red devil creature token with when this creature dies, it deals one damage to any target. Oh god. I don't even have word I don't even care. It's just not good. No, it's not. It does it's terrible. nothing. It's boop. Uh Tybalt's a Rager. That's what he goes on when he realized how bad his planeswalker <laughs> card was. Hey man, have you guys seen Tybalt? Yeah, he's on a Rager. He just saw his new card. When Tybalt's Rager dies, it deals one damage to any target. Tybalt's Rager gets plus two, plus O oh, until end of turn. Whatever. Tybalt, Rakish, Cacklish. <sighs> Tybalt, shitlord. <laughs> Turret Ogre, four mana for a four three. <laughs> With reach. Turret or Ogre is just an ogre throwing rocks. When That's Turret it. Ogre enters the battlefield, if you control another creature with power four or greater, it deals two damage to each opponent. I mean, it's not... Why does he have reach? Because he's big, I guess? That's not red. Meanwhile, I've seen bigger creatures. Have that... we ever seen a red card with reach? Uh, Probably. It was probably a dragon that couldn't fly. Like a dragon can't fly, but it's got reach. Like a dragon hatchling? I want to. I want to look at. I'm searching right now. Reach. And red. red. And I'll just search like that because I doubt there's. Oh, there's a, there's quite there's like six there's like one two four five six, a seven, spider nine, eleven. Okay, that one. No, that they don't all have. Oh, reach. this has breach. Yeah. So that doesn't have it. So it's one two three four five five. 
six, seven. seven. Seven red creatures of the Reach. All right. It's whatever. And they're all really weird. They're like, here's an Aether membrane. Here's a Chaos Sphere. And then there are, the other ones are like spiders. Or oh, uh, that was including Turret Ogre, too. Oh, wow. You're right. Huh. Hmm. On to the green, friend. Look at this little cutie. Arboreal Grazer. One green for an O3. With Reach. More Reach. God, Reach it everywhere, man. Feels good in green. When Arboreal Grazer enters... This is what I call a nerd. What is it? Frank will play this limited and say, why do I only have this one nerd on board? <laughs> I mean, that's yeah, that's true. Flying boulders are a bird's greatest weakness. That's actually true. <laughs> what? Uh, when Arboreal Grazer enters the battlefield, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. Okay. Good filler for your limited deck. Hmm. That's something. It's like an explorer, except for instead of drawing a card, you get an O3 reach. You get a sloth. He's a cutie, though. Yes. Arlen, voice of the pack, six mana for a seven loyalty planeswalker. Each creature you control that's a wolf or a werewolf enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter. So you're making three threes. Negative two, go to five, make a three three. Go to three, make a three three. Go to one, make a three. This makes three three threes for six it, mana. It does, and it's super strong, but just six is too much. And it's three three threes on one have, turn. Oh, this is great and limited. Yeah. I no one's know. playing this constructed. Yeah. Like you're gonna play Elspeth Sun's champion for six mana, and you're gonna play Arlen Voice of the Pack for six mana. And only one of those is going to actually make in your standard deck. It will be in standard, but's deck is real. What does that even mean? I don't know. Arlen's Wolf. Three mana for a 3-2. It can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. Good for you, buddy. Good for you. Awakening of V2 Gazi. This is actually pretty cool. Five <laughs> mana for a... <laughs> so weird. With this card? Yeah, nine one one counters. Like... Put nine one counters in the target land you control. It becomes a legendary OO elemental creature with haste. Named V2 Gazi, it's still a land. This when they designed this card, they went like this. Five and a four. Nine. <laughs> Five and a four. <laughs> We're gonna go with nine. Oh, six and a three. Dang it. <laughs> Alright, so the funny thing about this is I wish they'd untapped it because they're kind of guaranteeing, oh, you get haste? Cool. Well, that's only good if I play on six. six yeah. Right? Like I'd rather you play this on... I'd rather give uh, untap the land and give it haste because then you can play it on five, attack for nine. Maybe that's too good. I don't know. But this essentially costs six. This card wins in a landslide. <laughs> I mean, if, they, if they're if they not expecting it, this is like... Nine is a well, lot. Well, I guess end of turn five, you can do it. Well, mm -hmm. it's the same as doing it on turn six then, right? Anyway. Oh, interesting. Simic Ascendancy. How many counters do you need for That's nine. Ten? You need 20. 20? It still sucks. Yeah, but it yeah it still sucks. But it's, it makes me like it's a cool thing to do, and it makes me excited for that aspect of it. Dude, do you remember this card? We played this card a bunch together. You and me, band together. Yes, but it wasn't called that. Oh, it was the combo. It card. was combo. Attack. It was combo takedown. Yeah, or it's combo attack. It's called combo attack. What was it? Mm -hmm. I don't like you. I don't like when I say a card name and then you say the right card name and then I feel dang it, <laughs> dang it. Why do you like this? <sighs> All right, so. Uh, band together two and a green untap or not untap up to two target creatures you control each deal damage equal to their power to another target creature this card's great especially yeah, as an instant. instant speed this is great yeah this card's gas this is the kind of fight card I like because I'm like well it's an instant and I don't have to have just one dude and if my one dude gets killed I'm not completely blown out and if you have a 4-4 four four and I have a 2-2 two two, my fight card's not useless like this card like kind of fixes everything that's wrong with fight. They can't kill your guy in response. They don't do. If damage. their guy's bigger and your guy's smaller, you're not blown out. It's not a sorcery. Like they don't deal damage back. Yeah, like this fixes all of the problems with fight, and I think this card's very very good. I could even see I could even see this in like if there's like an aggressive green deck, um, it just gives you cards like Steel Leaf Champion or Galta or something that's just a removal spell now. Like this card's nice. Mm -hmm. I like this card. Bloom Hulk, four mana for a four four when it enters the battlefield proliferate. Again, like I'll play this in limited all day. I don't have a problem with proliferate. Um feels like you do. But if you tack no it doesn't shut <laughs> But if you tack it onto like a good body, like a four four for four up, totally fine. I'm I'm game. Uh Bond of Bound Bond of Flour. I was like bound? bound? This is an interesting card. James Bond of Flourishing. And uh Look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal a permanent card from among them, put it in your hand, put the rest on the bottom, and gain three. I just wish this cost one. Yeah, that's right. I feel like we were very really flush. We were looking very morbid. Um, I wish this cost one, but I don't think you could ever get away. It's just literally better than Adventurous Impulse at that rate. Mm -hmm. 
Um, uh, this can be cast off Bolas as Citadel. Also, being able to return a, like put a permanence card in your hand is nice because you're always going to hit a land. Yep. You'll always hit a planeswalker. You'll always hit a creature. Like there's mm -hmm. always something you're going to hit, and the gaining three life is not irrelevant. I also wish it was an instant, but maybe a two. It should be actually. Ah, no, that's too Unfortunately, good. Unfortunately, we, we can never change it, though. It's too good. We can never change it. We, uh, when we play together, like, at, our, at your house or... Uh, oh, we can ride we, over we can it. Yeah, that, we yeah. can sharpie it over and be like, instant. Yeah. Instant. Centaur Nurturer. Four mana. When it enters the battlefield, you gain three life. Add one mana of any color. Okay. That's all right. I'm excited for you. I, I, I'm glad you're happy, Centaur Nurturer. As long as you're happy, that's all that matters. Challenger Troll. Five mana. For a 6-5, each creature you control with power 4 or greater can't be blocked by more than one creature. Pretty good looted. Yeah, 6-5 five for 5 mm -hmm. is a great body in, like... Yeah, alright. Courage in Crisis. 3 mana for a sorcery. Put a 1-1 one -one counter on target creature, then proliferate. So it's 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 plus 2, plus 2 for 3, but the fact that this is a sorcery is really what's uh <clears throat> what's making this a garbage can this, card. Yeah, this isn't any good. I don't even think this is playable and limited. Yeah, but I don't think you're playable and limited either, so it's kind of... Uh, I have no courage. Yeah, that's it or miss. You don't have any courage. That's true. It's <laughs> unfortunate, but it's true. Evolution Sage. Three mana for a 3-2. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, proliferate. This, this card seems is good. good. There you go. <laughs> you know why? Because the proliferate is free, and it's just tacked on to a creature that's already good. good. rate. 3-2 for, for 3. And it sure. just happens over and over again. It just happens over and over again. As much as you want. Just like me and Rob's friendship. I'm just like, this is just happening over and over again. Yeah, this is good. This card's good, mm -hmm. and like this is this is a standard caliber card because like <clears throat> every time it has a repeatable proliferate effect that doesn't cost you any resources, which is pretty nuts. Like if you play this on three, and then on turn four you play a three mana planeswalker and then play your land. Yeah, it's like it's almost it's almost similar to tireless tracker in that your lands are just giving you exponential value. Uh, finalo, finalo. So what happens is. Whatever you have on the battlefield or players that have any sort of counter on them, it doesn't matter what it is. If you proliferate, you get to choose any number of them. So you could choose none of them, all of them, one of them. It doesn't matter. And then you add another one of those counter of what they already have. So if your opponent has nine poison counters and you proliferate, you give them a tenth and they die. If your planeswalker <laughs> has six that's, counters that's, on it, you proliferate, little, you move it up to seven. Niche, but yeah, he's, that's all right. Yeah, like, this card's great, because, like, even in, like, if you're playing a heavy Super Friends deck, you can just play this guy on turn, like, six, play your land, and then put four counters on things, or whatever, play a fetch land and proliferate twice. Like, That's pretty good. It just has a lot of, it has a lot of, uh, a lot of value, let's say. Finale of Devastation. Mm. Search your library and or graveyard for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less. So... At that point, it's just Green Sun Zenith, but you can also search your graveyard. Well, it's also and or, right? Yeah. So if I pay 4XX, I can search my graveyard and my library for a creature with converted mana cost X or less. So I get two two things. And it doesn't have to be green. That's true. Oh, wait a minute. What? No, you don't get two things. You only get one. It just allows you to search your library. Nope, I disagree with you. Here's the thing. Let's take out the and. Search your library or graveyard for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less. That does exactly what you think it does, right? Mm -hmm. you when pick. you add the and, no, you're so, getting two things. So what I think the and here does is, so for example, Mastermind's Acquisition. It literally says, it's it's an or, right? You choose your deck or your or uh, um, your sideboard. So what happens is, is if I elect to choose my deck and I mess up and I wanted a card for my sideboard, I can no longer search my sideboard because I elected my deck. And here allows you to go through your deck and or also pick a card from your graveyard. You, you don't, There's no way you could pay four mana and get two cards from a card that was banned in Modern and a card that was... that's There's no way. Okay. Yeah, it, 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 it allows you to see your deck as well as your graveyard is what it lets you do. By the way, it doesn't have to be a green creature. Whatever, dude. This card's, this card's really good. This is this is very good. Yeah, so you can search both fields. Whatever, dude. I liked it better the other way. I bet you did. I, I would too. All right, fine. Until someone cast it on you. <laughs> well, they're already casting shit I don't like, so it doesn't really matter if I like this one or not. Just add it to the list. Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, if you search your library for this way, shuffle it. If X is ten or more, or twelve, creatures you can shuffle plus X plus X and get haste until end of turn. Uh, that you could cut the you could literally cut the bottom of that card off. I like this a lot less than I did before. What? Yeah, man. It's Green Sun Zenith. Uh, I 
for another one though it's green sun no no no. listen 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 right. it's green sun zenith in the same way mind shatter was mind twist and it is not that's I, I I don't think you can compare those two cards because there's of their a big ability. difference between Steel Leaf Champion on turn four and turn five, like one yeah, but, turn in those in those but, in those. But Steel Leaf Champion isn't the type of card you're you're hitting bullets. This doesn't limit you to green. You can hit any card in your deck. You can search up a Knight of Autumn. You can search up your 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 Knight. Battle Pig. You could like <laughs> don't call him Battle Pig. It's a Battle Pig. Oh my god, it's a Battle Pig. <laughs> Party oh, pig, Lord. he comes to party. Yeah, party pig. Party pig. Just call him Bebop. This card is broken in half. This card. It's not broke. Don't be. Don't say it's broken in this half. This card is. In, in it's good. Instantly it's playable. Good it will be played in modern. Yeah. All right, maybe it's it, good. It, and you could get it's something good. that's dead. So in a de in like a Vanifar deck or a deck that has a lot of one ofs, you can get back that one of that you want. <laughs> Oh, you can search up Phage the Untouchable and then lose the game. That's actually a solid That's strategy. Relevant. Mm -hmm. That's a solid That's strategy. Relevant. What does she cost? Seven? So for ten ma Six. for nine mana. I think she has seven, actually. Is it X or less? Okay, that's good. So I don't get penalized if I That's Battle Pig God to you. <laughs> it's not he's not a god though. He's like one of the non gods. We were talking about how he's sad that he's not a god. Alright, card's good. I don't wanna I don't wanna have another Hydroid Crassus, man. Do you remember when we were like Hydroid Crassus seems too expensive, it does seem great? That was our shame. It that was. was our shame from from Ravnica Allegiance. It it was, but to be fair, I also misread that card. Oh my god! I thought that it got oh, no, half it did, the counters. Guys. I didn't. Know. You thought it got half the. It does no. No, it gets. Yeah, it gets, if you pay five, you get five. Guys, I missed. I didn't know what the card did. You see, it, it oh fetches Fibble Fib. I I'm also four mana. Draw two cards. That doesn't seem good to me. The I'd double green just is the just one. throwing me, man. Because like I know, mind shatter is not mind twist. Mind twist is one of those broken black X spells ever printed, and mind mind shatter, which is still random discard for one extra mana, did not have the same effect. And I know similarly, like when you ex when you extend mana costs by even one, it has a huge effect on the cards. I agree. I agree with you. I think though, searching a creature is good anytime. Mind shattering is not good all the time. This card is you top deck this turn fifty. You you still want to see it? You think there's gonna be a turn fifty? There could be. Well, if there's turn fifty, then you get to plus. Then you get to do it for ten. So yeah. I think you're fine. <laughs> uh, then your fibble thip gets forced haste. landing. Put target creature with flying on the bottom of its owner's library. I mean, this is like this is Baker's dozen with plummet. Like six of one, half dozen of the other. I think they're both fine. Um, there's certain situations where you're going to want in the graveyard, certain situations where you're going to want on the bottom. This is nice because it puts a Kefnet on the bottom of the library, which is a good way to deal with it. But that's the only one of those gods that actually fly, so it's, you know, mm. it, it is what it is. <laughs> Force landing equals no kindling, Phoenix. Giant. Oh, that's nice. See, there you go. See, that's, yeah, this is, uh, these are situations. However, on the other hand, well, I was going to say it does let you, uh, Software Elves, thank you so much for the resub. Welcome back. Really appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. If you guys want to support the channel, you can sub or give me a follow. Uh, I do stream five to six days a week, so you'll definitely uh, you'll definitely see me around here. Giant Growth, one mana, plus three, plus three. That's a, what are you doing? Baker's Dozen there? No, you said five or six days, so I, I threw out a five. That's nice. Then you threw out a thing. Out that's six. nice. That's good. That's like you're like a magician. God Eternal Ronus, five mana for a five, five. Uh, this, is, these are, this, this is like the weakest stats... For casting cost, right? Yeah, because some are five are six, some have evasion and cost less. Death touch. Well, oh, that's I mean he's five five. Like, what's he not killing when he attacks anyway? Uh, but I know that's more flavor wise because he's the like the the death touch god. When God when it enters the battlefield, double the power of each other creature you control until the end of the turn. Those creatures gain vigilance until the end of the turn. I don't think this is any good. It's like a one it's of playable, maybe? but it's not like blowing me away. I mean, yeah, like I don't think it's it's whatever. Mm. Do they get trample? No, they, no, they gain vigilance. Who cares about that? No one cares. No one does care. How many creatures are you gonna have? Also, it's double the Three. power, right? Because if you have like a two-two and a one-one, like now it's a two-two and a four-four. Like no, it's not. It just becomes a a two-one and a four-two. Oh, four-two. So yeah, it's worse. So it's... Steel Leaf into this seems fine, right? But like Steel Leaf doesn't need the help, is the thing. Yeah. Like I can still just chump block a Steel Leaf with like a three-three or something. Galta is the only thing that this is probably good with. Right, but power. again, Galta's probably uh, winning by itself. Yeah, your Galta just wins the game like, by itself already. It's like saying if I can ultimate my Jace, uh, <laughs> you know, I could probably add this other card that helps me. Like, but you're ultimating the Jace, so I think you're good. Jang Yangu, Wild Crafter, three mana for a three loyalty Planeswalker. Each creature you control with a one-one counter on it has tap add one mana of any color. This dog is amazing. 
Uh, negative one, put a one one counter on target creature. This is actually interesting. This card reminds me of um, Rishkar. Yeah, this is a very Rishkar esque card. Also, um, it it triggers it uh, triggers all the uh, the adapt creatures that have. Mm -hmm. Triggered abilities from their oh so shark put, to crab yeah shark to crab or like uh, incubation druid or growth ch growth chamber Ooh, guardian incubation druid into this that's yeah. really good so wait let's think so if you turn three so that means it gives turn, you an extra turn three two mana. incubation druid yep turn three you play this with your lands put a counter on the incubation druid and then you can tap the incubation druid for, for three more three. yeah and then it's pretty good yeah well I think this card is really good anyways actually plus it's also and then it's a one three so it's a little bit a little bit safer like I mean it's 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 not bad. Plus, you can just add one mana of any color anyway. So, mm -hmm. I like this card a lot. Yeah, actually. it's good. I think it's I think it's reasonable cost. I think, I think this, the ability is good. This is one of the few. It's also very strong with proliferate because yep. you can put counters on your guys and then mm -hmm. proliferate. So, crawl stinger three mana for a two two death touch. This I feel like just, that thing should have different stats than a two two the way it looks. Daggerback basilisk here. Yeah. Crunch wrangler. Sometimes you got to wrangle those crunches. Two one for two trample. Whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, put a one one counter on it. Mm. Too slow for constructed. Okay. I think it's funny, like whenever a creature with power four or greater is about focus, I'm like, but I'm not, ferocious. These are already big. Oh, there is a lot of throwbacks. No, no, no. Here. He puts counters on himself, doesn't he? Yeah. Oh, okay. But I'm like, those guys are already big, so I'm like, I don't need this. Yeah, it's whatever. I mean, it's fine. I understand it. It's, it's not a. I, it shouldn't be a point of contention, I guess. Uh, three, three for four with trample and vigilance. If one or more one one counters will be placed on Mowu, a loyal companion. That many plus one. So if he gets one counter, he gets two. If he gets two, he gets three. If he gets four, he gets five. So with the you other card we just talked about, he becomes a five five. Yeah, which is out. perfect because it makes total sense. Like he, yeah, you play this on four after you play. Uh, I forgot his name. Jiang Yang. Jiang Yang. Um, Jang and then <laughs> he becomes a five five immediately. Five five with trample, trample vigilance. Yeah. It's actually it's a pretty sweet with a cute collar. Uh, New Horizons, three mana, enchant land. When it enters the battlefield, put a one one counter on target creature control. A relevant choice for this set because of all the proliferate. Uh, Chain of Land, and, and also because Adapt was just the previous format, the previous set, so you have both Adapt and Proliferate working with this. Enchant Land has tap, add two mana of any one color. Okay. Uh, we have not reviewed any of the multicolor <coughs> cards yet. Nissa who shakes the world. Three green green for a five loyalty planeswalker. Whenever you tap a forest, add an additional green. Okay, I do like that. Uh, plus one, put three one one counters on up to one target non- creature land you control untap it becomes zero zero elemental with vigilance and haste see this one untaps the land mm -hmm. that's nice so you're making three threes instead of four fours which you would have done previously with nissa um but again this is counters so you can proliferate onto those lands whereas like previous nissa like nissa world waker made them a four four land mm -hmm. uh where proliferate would have no effect this one actually just makes a land that you can proliferate i don't into. think this card is really any good outside of we the haven't even read the ultimate rob unbelievable Negative eight. You get an emblem with lands you control have indestructible. Search your library for any number of forest cards, put them on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle your library. Go ahead. I don't think this card's any good. Okay. Outside of the first ability. Eh. The first ability is kind of misleading because if you actually read that, that allows you to like tap your breeding pools and your um, any of your other forests, like your temple gardens. Why is, you, that, why is that misleading? Well, because when you it says tap a forest for mana, add an additional green. Right. There are cards in the past that it makes you think like if you tap your basic so this is only producing green mana but it's not you can have this in in multicolored decks and oh, yeah, still get the no, mana, not, I don't think the mana buff from it I think that's well known like that's well established that like that's why you get like with wood elves or like farseek you get breeding pools or you get savannas mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is your favorite land so <laughs> uh, makes sense yeah I don't know like the negative 8 I never I never consider the ultimate on planeswalkers no. to be part of their abilities because the, the, the frequency that they're actually activated is like so low like it's probably like five percent of games where you activate a planeswalker's loyalty ability, ultimate ability. So like you really have to weigh around the plus one and the static ability. And I just don't think they're that great. And 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 to be honest with you, like she's already on five, right? So when I untap on turn on six, six, like how, how many, many cards? Do I really need? Right. How many cards do I have in my hand in a green deck that I'm ready to cast? Like, uh. I mean, if Ulamog was still in the format, I could see because then you just untap, sure, cast an Ulamog on turn six. Um, I, my problem is that like I don't really feel like Nissa's shaking the world here. I, I don't feel shook. Go ahead, untap your fancy land. Unta Nissa untaps any land. That's true, I guess. I'm not an, I'm not shook. I'm not shook either. This is Triumph. Green, green. I kind of like this, though, and it kind of scares me a little bit. Search your library for up to two basic forest cards. If you control a Nissa Planeswalker, I mean, it's already drawing two for two, right? Mm -hmm. um, they're basic forests, so you can't get Breeding Pool. You can't get Savannah, whatever. 
Uh, if you control a Nissa Planeswalker, instead search library for up to three land cards in general. Just regular, any lands. Um, reveal those cards, put them into your hand, and then shuffle your library. So, um, yeah, I mean, being able to get all three Tron lands, being able to, like, I don't think this is, this is, this is a card that's great in the early game because it'll just draw you two lands, mm -hmm. but it's also great in the late game that draws you any three lands. So you can have a tutor package, you can have, like, the Planeswalker lands that, like, gain you a life and help you cast Planeswalkers. Like, there's just a lot of, just draw, it's also just drawing three cards for two, or it's drawing two cards for two, and I think this card's very good. Wow. Someone's at my door. Someone's at my, my door. My door. Are you, what are your thoughts on this? Anything? I don't think it's okay. I mean, it's okay. I don't think it's that great because the front half is really what you're using it for, I think. And I mean, it's good, but I just can't picture a deck that it goes in. Really? Mm -hmm. What if you have like, I mean, like, yeah, all right. You're, you're struggling to come up with a what if scenario. That probably should tell you. Well, Tron's not going to play it on turn two, but Tron's also not going to have a Planeswalker on turn one to play it on turn two, right? This is so, way too... Th I, I don't think... This is definitely not a Tron card. No, I mean, people people like to joke because you're getting three, three, lands. three lands and no, it's, it's perfect Tron. Close. But I mean, like... Where are you casting No, the Nissa? situations where, where a Tron has a Nissa and then is able to pay green, green, and then doesn't have any Tron lands at that time. So even in a perfect world, if there was a one-man Nissa and they played it on one, and then on turn two, they played this... They would still start assembling Tron on, on turn three, four, and five. <laughs> so like they still don't have Tron till turn five. So like if you guys see this going into a Tron deck, you're not you're living in fantasy world. It's very strange. It's <laughs> this card I love. Paradise Druid, one and a green for a two one. Paradise Druid has hexproof as long as it's untapped. You can tap it to add one man of any color. My biggest issue with this card, despite really, really liking it, uh, is that a card called Chain Whirler exists. Yeah. And that makes me very sad. Yeah. But it has hexproof. Cool. That doesn't help, does it? It helps from other cards. It's really mm -hmm. good because, like, you can, you definitely get one activation out of this to ramp yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I originally mm -hmm. had this in the Niv Mizzet brew that I was working on because I think just being able to ramp or being able to have access to any color is very, very strong. And you're always going to be able to activate it once, you know, barring they play them playing a uh, chain, chain roller. roller. But, um, you know. Uh, as far as mana creatures go, I think this is very strong. It's a two one, so it's it's attackable. It has hexproof, so it's guaranteed to get at least one activation if they don't have, if they don't wrath the board, and it adds one mana of any color, not just green. So it hits a lot of marks. Uh, my only issue is that chain roller does exist, but eventually it won't. So maybe we'll see. Plain wide celebration, seven mana for a sorcery, but choose four, and you can choose the same mode more than once. Create a two two citizen. That's all colors, so you can make four four two twos. Return target permanent from your graveyard to your hand, so you can return four permanents. Proliferate four times, or gain four life, so gain sixteen life. And you can mix and match these in any way you choose. So I can, I would actually, what is it four? Mm. How would you do the math for this to figure out how many different uh, variations there are? I'm not a statistician, so I don't know. Is it like four to the, to the? There's six total. There's six? Yep. There's definitely not six <laughs> total. There's six. I, I just counted it. Oh, well, never mind then. Uh, yeah, so this card's interesting. I mean, seven mana is a lot, but if you're playing a green deck, like... This card's terrible. I, I could see this as a one of. If there's... Okay, so let's look at the... But see, here's the thing. You want to look at the cards that they've given you so far. They've given you the X spell. Mm -hmm. They've given you the two mana draw two forests card. Uh, they've given you the, um, the Nissa Planeswalker, and they've given you this, right? So... I feel like they're giving you a lot of components for a big green deck, right? Yeah. And I could see this as like a one-up. Return even, four permanents from your graveyard. Like, that's yeah. pretty strong. Gaining yeah. 16 life. The the thing is, like, all of these abilities by themselves are not impressive. But doing them four times, mm -hmm. doing four different things is Eight not Eight life, bad. getting back two cards. Right. Seven is just so it steep, is, man. But you're playing a green deck, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I don't know. I, I, I'm not going to rule it out because I think the, it's versatile enough. But, um... 256 combinations, but really only one. Really? What's the what's the only one? Anyway. Also, if you proliferate four times with this, like yeah. you're, you can probably ult quite a few Planeswalkers. Mm -hmm. That's four counters on every Planeswalker, which is pretty mm -hmm. insane. Yeah. Yeah, that seems good. I don't know. Like, this card seems like a, a really, like, I'm going to win the game now card. A math bomb just exploded in chat. Yeah, I, you're welcome. You're welcome. Factorial includes a choice chosen multiple times, no? No. No. <laughs> I think it's good. I think it's cool. Pollen Bright Druid. Uh, two mana for a 1-1. One, one. When it enters the battlefield, choose one. Put a 1-1 one on counter on target creature or proliferate. This is a better Iron Beetle. This is literally... It costs one less and you get one other option. Then yeah. what? 
than the Iron Beetle. No, Iron Beetle's two and puts them on one counter. Iron Beetle was two. What's the one that was in this set? That's Iron Beetle, isn't it? That was a three mana card. It's three mana one one. Oh, in thi- this something. actual set? Correct. No, I'm not talking about that. There's a there's a card in standard right now that's it costs one and a green. It's a one one, and when it enters the battlefield, you put a one one counter on target creature. Who cares about that? I don't care about that. Skip it. Who cares about any of this? What button do you press to go to the next card right now? Right. Okay. The right button. Oh, it worked. All right, great. <laughs> should I play, should I hit it again? <gasps> this is better than Colossal Dreadmaw. Hmm. Yes. Return to nature. This card is bonkers. Two mana. Bonkers. Choose one. Destroy target artifact or destroy target enchantment. It's okay, so it's naturalized. Yeah. Also, exile what? a card from a graveyard. This card is dope, dude. It is good. I, I agree with good. Swanny Boy. This card is a dope. If Disenchant can see play in Legacy, this can see play in Popper. <laughs> what does that even mean? I'm just saying. I mean, like, this is invalidates every naturalized that's ever been Correct. Printed. I agree. Like, this <laughs> just replaces naturalized and legacy and standard and modern and pauper and every format that ever played a naturalized. This is just better. Naturalized has been errated. I mean, like, there's a part of me that's like, okay, nature's claim and natural state, they're great, but the one mana might even be worth a deck solid graveyard card. Hmm. It's flexibility. It's it's it, it's it, extreme it makes flexibility. Sideboard slot just better. It's unbelievable. Like I, I was surprised when I read this. I'm like, what's the catch? Oh, there's no catch. It's literally just it, it's naturalized with one extra mode. That's crazy, dude. Are there more artifact than that you need to kill on standard than flyer? Uh, what do you mean? Are there more artifact that you need to kill on standard than flyers? Qual, qual, uh, clarify your question. I like this card. snare spinner. One two for one for one two for a one three with Richie boy. Uh, whenever it blocks a creature with flying, it gets plus two plus zero. Oh. So it's just a three three. Uh, 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 it just blocks three mm-hmm. threes. Sure. I limited. I mean, obviously, this is not an answer to the gods. You like this? Unlimited. You said yeah. Unlimited. Right on. Yeah, sure. That's fine. Because I play the one four reach and limited. Steady. Next slide. Yeah, you're right. Steady aim. One and a green untap target creature gets plus one plus four and gains a reach. Next slide. Cool. Storm the Citadel, five mana. Until the end of the turn, creatures you control get plus two, plus two, and gain. Whenever this creature does combat damage to a player, a planeswalker destroy target artifact or enchantment defending player controls. Too expensive, but cool effect. Is it too expensive? Five? Yeah, way too expensive. I mean, overrun plus three, plus three. This is plus two, plus two. It's much easier to cast because it doesn't have any, it's a single green. And then you get like this Trigon Predator ability. Oh, EDH, this card's probably nuts, sure. I agree with that. That's actually really good. Yeah. Well, not so much, actually, because it doesn't oh, allow well. you to target. It, it doesn't actually give you multiple targets. You have to... Well, if I'm attacking well, you, I, guess I can't you can, destroy you can Mike's enda- yeah, you encha- can. enchantment, right? Like, I have to. you have to destroy the artifact enchantment that belongs to the person you're attacking. Yeah. Which is fine. I mean, it's whatever, man. Pretty good. Don't You can't go crazy, dude. I'm, I'm not. I'm going to stay calm. Don't go crazy. Anyway. Thundering Ceratok. Five mana for a 4-5. Trample. When it enters the battlefield, other creatures you control gain trample. Thanks, man. That's a bro, dude. Like, when a creature comes into play and he gives all your Let me help you out, what dude. he has, mm-hmm. he gives what he he gives from himself, you yeah. know? A little piece of him. God, what a, what a champ. Vivian, Champion of the Wilds. Three mana for a four loyalty Planeswalker. You can tell Vivian's the green's new hotness because she's a rare. Yeah. And the other Nissa. Was the other Nissa? Nissa was rare. Dang it. She was worse. But though. none of the other ones were. You may cast creature spells as though they had flash. That's gas. I'm on board already, guys. I don't even have to read the rest. For three mana, that's great because it comes down before you start. You want to start casting your stuff. The you can cast creatures. Hydroid Crassus. At instant. Yo, T, dude. Until your until your next turn, up to one target creature gains vigilance and reach. Her neck two is Fine. even good too. Look at the top three cards of your library. Exile one face down and put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So, for as long as it remains exiled, you may look at the card and you may cast it if it's a creature. It could be anything. So, oh, it's if it's a creature. I didn't see that earlier. But still, it's not bad. That's interesting that it's like a Gonti and not like it just put it in the... Why not just put it in your hand? Yeah. Because they can't interact with it, maybe? I guess, but that seems a real niche. Mm. As long as it remains exiled, you may look at that card... And you may cast it if it's a creature card. Cheating Crasis with Reclamation. That's true. Oh my That's true. god. You go turn, up your mana. turn three this, turn four Wilderness Reclamation. I don't like Wilderness Reclamation. I think it's just too it's too good. It's a cheaty card. Vivian's I Arc like Boat. This. Two mana. So I'm going to play this Legendary Artifact for two. X and a tap. Discard a card. Look at, let's say, three. I'll pay three in this. Discard a card. Look at the top three cards of your library. You may put a creature card with a mana cost three or less from among them. I don't like when the Xs refer to multiple things because mm-hmm. it, 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 it starts to get too restrictive. 
So if I tap one, I can look at the top one cards and yeah, I can put a creature and it has to be one drop. Um, isn't there a card that's similar to that? It's like an X spell. Gen Wave? No, it's not Gen Wave. Because Gen Wave, is it? I mean, maybe it is. Gen, Gen Wave is worded the exact same way. Uh, you may put a creature card with convert. No, it's one of the it's one of the creatures. It's like one of the hydras, I think. Hmm. Anyway, you may from knowing them on the battlefield, put the rest in the library. You like this card? Heck, this card's really good. This card's super good. Like after turn four, turn five, like you get to end step, to like look at the top five cards of your library, discard a land you don't care for, and and just like with elf with elves and other things making mana, like this card is really good. This card's super good. Hmm. Oh, Gen it's Genesis Hydra. I'm just saying, like, I feel like there's a lot of situations where you're a spending a lot of mana and b you're not hitting. It's not a four of, and then you're discarding the card. Like you're discard, you're just discarding. Well, a card. I mean, it goes in a creature deck. Like the deck list I sent you, that that one deck list, it just seems great. Like you're hitting cards with ETB effects. You can do them on, on instep. You can do it. You know what I mean? It's just it, it's this card seems really good to me. Good for reanimator. No, but I mean, the cards don't go in the graveyard though. They go on the bottom of your library, so. Yeah, I don't see how this goes to green. Yeah, I don't know. Because oh, you discard a card, but that's you're not doing... Oh, sure, because you can discard, like, a, I'll, I'll discard my Grissom. There are a lot of cards that say discard a card. Yeah, know, I don't know. I, this card's this card's interesting. I don't dislike it. I'm just not seeing it. This works with Reclamation, too. That doubles up your mana. Paying X to discard... Pay, like, if you have four mana, so even if you don't hit your land yeah. drop the next turn, you get you get to dig eight cards <laughs> for an eight drop or less. Well, this Reclamation, making mediocre cards unbeatable since 2019. Fibble Thip draw two, that's relevant. Vivian's Grizzly. God, Vivian's got a lot of things. <laughs> Five, three mana for a 2-3. Look at the top card of your library. If it's a creature or planeswalker, you may reveal it and put it into your hand. Mm -hmm. uh, for four mana? I mean, I If you don't put the card in your hand, put it on the bottom of your library. What? What did you say? I don't even know what I said. <laughs> I don't even know. I kind of <laughs> just mumbled. <laughs> four mana is a lot, dude. I'm not going to... I mean, no, this isn't playable. In no, it's un, no. it's it's no, it's bad. Ooh. Word scale, crocodile, 5-3 with hexproof for five. Stop putting hexproof in sets, man. If I don't if I don't have a creature to block the I just stop. This card's actually really good with reclamation. <laughs> good, I switched in there. Oh, we're on to the gold cards. Now I'm excited. I like the gold cards. The gold cards we're gonna have a lot of fun things to a lot talk of good about. Gold. Now. Are you are you good? Yeah, I'm down. Let's go. Okay. Uh a Johnny the Great Hearted. Four mana for a five loyalty planeswalker. Creatures you control have vigilance. That's fine. Plus one, gain three life. That's also fine. Goes to six, and just a, a nice chunk of life. Negative two, put a one-one counter on each creature you control and a loyalty counter on each other planeswalker. That's pretty strong. very strong. Pretty strong. Yeah, this In is In the right nice. deck, it's a strong card. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I'm okay with this. Um, I think this card's fine. At, at four mana, I think it's a sweet spot. Like, yeah. It's 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 hard to mess up a four mana planeswalker, I think. I think that effect... As long as your effects are decent, yeah. I think you're okay. Yeah, that effect at three is just way too strong. Especially when you plus one this and it goes to six automatically. Like that's mm -hmm. a very that's a decent planeswalker. Yeah, Your creatures fine. also have vigilance, so he does kind of protects himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this this is too strong at three. Yeah. You want a five loyalty planeswalker for three mana? That puts a counter on all of your creatures. Well, no, my point was you were trying to say that like it's it's hard to mess up a four. Drop. No, I'm like, saying like someone, oh. someone actually said you should make this three. It I'm should like, be three. No, oh no way, yeah, dude, that's, no way. That's insane. That's way too busted. That's not balanced. Angrath's Rampage, black and a red. Choose one. Target player sacrificed an artifact. Target player sacrificed a creature. Target player sacrificed a planeswalker. I, I think this card's good. Um, Should be an instant. Uh, I think... I, I mean, I think all sorceries should be instants. I think I'm just... <laughs> I think I'm just a... I think I'm just a fan of instants over sorceries. Mm. Um... That being said, the only mode I don't like is creature on this. I think usually when you make them sack a planeswalker, it's going to be their only one. Usually if they have an artifact, it's probably going to be their only one. Usually when it's a creature, it's a 1-1 one -one spirit token. Right. It's, a, it's Yeah, it's, it's one of their afterlife tokens. Um, but you're playing black-red, so you should have a way to kind of manufacture a situation where you get to kill what you want. Flexible card, but I think Bedevil is just better. Oh, for one more mana, for sure. Mm -hmm. Because then you're... You're literally choosing which artifact creature or planeswalker to kill. Speed. It's weird because like this isn't a bad card. I just think there's a much better option mm -hmm. in the same in the same format in the same colors. Ribbon Dancer and Graph. Uh, however, yeah, Carnage Tyrant is definitely a card that you can get rid of with this uh, if you engineer the situation correctly. Which in green you should be able to, so, or in, in black and red you should be able to. So, anyway. Bio Essence Hydra. This is interesting. Every time I see Hydra, the bar is set super high now, but nevertheless. Five mana for a four four trampler. Okay, uh, you're gonna do something, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with you here because I don't think these are terrible stats. <laughs> 
Bios and Tardra enters the battlefield with a 1 1 counter for each loyalty counter on planeswalkers you control. So if I played a planeswalker on 3 and a planeswalker on 4, let's say I have 5 loyalty counters among the two of them. Uh, this is a 9 9. Pretty big. Whenever one or more loyalty counters are put on a planeswalker, put that many counters on this as well. So if I plus 2 something, like, that gets 2 counters. If I plus 1 something, it gets a counter. Like, this, this has a potential to be real big. Yeah, I don't like it. Okay, well. I don't think it's any good. Really? Not at all. It's just a card that you have to deal with, right? This is your standard Simic Junk Rare. That's funny, because I thought I always thought you were the standard Simic Junk Rare. I'm just like BioS and Hydra. Hmm. We're one and the same. Just a couple of bros with multiple heads. We're just two lost BioS and Hydra swimming in the same bowl. <laughs> Looks as good at Galloping Lizrog. That's you're exactly right. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the next card, but I think this card's cool. I think it's uh I think it can be very strong. I think the art is cool. Say something again. Say something again. I said I think the art the art is cool. Okay, I was just checking your levels because this mic's pretty oh, I'm sorry for me. I think you you have to respect how close these mics have to be to you. No, not that close. Just have to be normal. Just be normal, that's all. T Ravis, thank you so much for the resub, buddy. Twenty two months. Really appreciate it, my dude. Casualties of War. Two black, black, a green, green. Destroy everything. Choose one or more. Whatever you want. I like to like, yeah, choose one or, you know, more. Whatever you want to do. Destroy an artifact. Destroy a creature. Destroy an enchantment. Destroy a land. Destroy a planeswalker. Six mana is a lot for only getting one of each of these. Um, that being said, this is a lot of things to kill. This is a sta this is an EDH staple. Your mother's an EDH She's a casualty staple. of war. She's a what? Casualty of war. My that's, mother. That's sad. Um. Yeah, I don't think this. I don't think this card is bad. Sorry, Fictionot. We used to be friends, man. But that Hydra's junk. He's just not any good. Hydra's good. Hydra's good. You're not. Got him. I want to make you a shirt that says "All good, even Hydra." I can do that. Okay. Asher can do that. Um. What do you think about this? It's not playable. Not playable. Not in standard. Too expensive. Not in those colors. Yeah, maybe you're right. I don't know. Like, in a perfect world, like, the enchantment's probably not going to be there. The artifact's probably not going to be there. This is going to destroy... But it is it is targeted, right? Like, you get to choose which creature you want to kill. You get to choose a planeswalker, and then you just kill yeah, a you're, land. you're killing basically one of everything on the battlefield that you want to. I don't know. I can definitely see this as a one of. Sure. Okay. I don't think it's bad. I think it's it's very versatile. It's just... It does have its limitations. Cruel Celebrant. This art's great. Mm -hmm. uh, black, white, and it's a one-two. <laughs> Whenever it or another creature or planeswalker you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain a life. Not non-token. Not non-token, which is always relevant. So there's another blood artist. Um. Yeah, this card's good. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we don't need to. We don't need to tell you how aristocrats work. You know how they work. Death Sprout. One black, black, green. Destroy target creature. Search your library for a basic land card. Put it onto the battlefield. Tapped. Then shuffle your library. I like this card a lot. Uh, oh. This is a this is a U card for sure. This is a destroy any creature. It doesn't have to be black. It doesn't have to be non black. It doesn't have to be non non artifact. And, Zero discrimination. Uh, and then you search a land for a land. You search a library for a land and put it on the battlefield. And that's all I want. This actually is a pretty good. Um, and can you name the other good thing about it? The artist. It's an instant. Mm. Mm. Oh, you didn't say instant. You said artist. That's weird. D spark. White, black, exile target permanent for my house four greater. This is actually good too. Very good. I like this a lot. Yep. This kills most relevant thing. Most relevant things. This is also interesting because in modern you can you can hit a Tasker, you can hit a Gurmag Angler. Um, you can hit Jace the Mind Sculptor. Like, this card's versatile. Uh, permanents that cost four or more. Sideboard card for sure. It's really good though. Oh yeah, for Instant sure. Instant speed, two mana, remove anything on any kind of permanent. Killing a re kill a re killing re killing a rekindling phoenix is super nice too. Like Especially just, in these colored decks because they're generally um, trying to one for one or attack through. Unseen Spectre, thank you so much for the 25 months in a row, dude. Way to go. How many? 25 months in a row. That is a lot. Lord. That is a good amount. You get to use cuss words in chat now. Yeah, getting rid of Worms, worm steel, uh, worm steel Colossus, Blight Steel Worm. Worm Steel Colossus? Yeah, and Blight Steel Worm. Getting rid of those guys is really impressive as well. <laughs> um, like, the point is there's a lot of creatures that you just want to exile instead of destroy, and this gets This rid also of, works really well with Wilderness kills Reclamation. Kills Teferi. Kills Wilderness Reclamation. I I think this is main deckable and standard. I can see this as one of. It, 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 even against Red Decks, it hits, it, it hits um, the enchantment. The one that lets them see their cards, their deck. 
Oh, experiment from Yeah, sure. so, so maybe this is a main deck of No, I mean, the thing is, like, you're spending two mana for something they guaranteed spend at least four mana on. Like, the, the amount of mana efficiency you're getting out of this, the mana value is really high. The, you know what? You convinced me. This is main deckable. Yeah. Even I, I was trying to think of where it Most hit. decks in standard have a target for this, at mm -hmm. least one. Seraph, Ser Seraph of the Scales. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't get the afterlife triggers. Yep. This is Exile, yeah. Yeah, this is good. This That's really good. <laughs> uh, Domri, Anarch of Bolas. One black, one red green. For a three loyalty planeswalker, creatures you control get plus one plus zero. That's a nice little buff. Uh, add red or green creature spells you cast this turn can't be countered. So it's kind of like a half. Mm -hmm. uh, it's this is interesting because the other Domri has add a green or a red and then riot. The creature gets riot if you use that. And this is add red or green and creatures you control can be countered. So um, both of the Domries have a plus one that adds the mana that gives you half of Rhythm of the Wild. Uh, the negative two target creature you control fights a creature you don't control. I think this card's really good now that I see it. I, I don't remember seeing this card, but this card works really good with um, the goblin. It's three mana. I think it's I think it's really fine for three mana, and on turn it ramps you to five. The, having having this card come out the turn after you play the goblin, the goblin lord Cranko. Yeah, you make three dudes, and they're all two ones. Oh, that seems pretty good, and it helps you cast it. Can't be countered. Also, I mean, if you want to play uh, Niv-Mizzet, too, you can play this, and then he can't be countered. And mm -hmm. it adds either a red or a green. Yep, so, so it hits, hits two different two different land types. So if yeah, you have, if like, you have, a breeding pool, you uh, can tap your breeding pool a, for blue. Yeah, or, like, a sacred foundry. You mm -hmm. can get the white out of that and then still get a green or a red. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. And for three mana, like, it's really hard to, to complain about three mana planeswalkers because they come down so early. Rhythm of Wild's not better because Rhythm of Wild doesn't give you flexibility. This card does more than one thing. Uh, yeah, the fight is relevant, and the adding mana is relevant, and the plus one. Like, this does a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And like none of them, rhythm does. Rhythm doesn't ramp you. Rhythm doesn't fight. And it's not. It's it's not like it's one of the uncommon ones where you can't plus it and activate the. You're not limited on the neg on the neg activations. Domri's ambush, red green. Put a one one counter on target creature you control. Then that creature does damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker you don't control. This is another interesting card because it's not fighting. Mm -mm. But the, what you call it's just better than this thrash. It's, it's weird because like. This is two cards in the same set that aren't fighting, but they're mm -hmm. doing the fight ability. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you still have Domri, who fights, mm -hmm. right? So, like, the keyword fight exists, but you also have these two cards that are doing a, a, they're doing a fight. Two with the same name. But they're not fighting. But they're doing it differently. This is very weird. Skip. I don't know. Like, this card's... You don't like this card? There's already a card in standard that's better than this. It's Thrash. instant. Thrash. Yeah, I guess so. Dovin's Veto. Uh, yeah. One in a blue. This spell can't be countered. Counter target non-creature spell. This should be a rare. This is literally just an uncounterable negate, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of a instead of a colorless, you got to pay mm -hmm. white, but it's resolving. This will so. see legacy play. This card's great. This will this will probably see this will probably see it could even see play in. This blue, card white, is just beautiful. Yeah, this is a great just card. Just beautiful. I like this card. And if you guys are watching the stream for the first time, definitely uh, definitely consider following or subscribing. I'm a regular Magic streamer. I stream four to five five to six days a week actually, and. Uh, Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. Dread Horde Butcher. One black, one red uh, for a 1-1 one, one haste. 1-1 one, one haste. Woo! <laughs> Coming uh, in hot. When, it, when Dread Horde Butcher deals combat damage to a player or a planeswalker, put a 1 encounter on it. So it's basically Slith Firewalker, right? Yep. Uh, when it dies, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. That's actually not bad. I don't think this card is any good. Really? Yeah. So that was Firewalker any good? Yes. Firewalker was amazing at the time. What? Yes, it was in the mono red deck. Slith Firewalker was un unreal at the time. All right. Oh, we're at 500? We're at 500 right now? Oh, baby. Um, We're doing it. I mean, it's cool if you can get through. Turn through kill with this with Colossus and Thud. What is called? Oh, because you can just... So turn two, you attack, make it a two-two. Turn three, you make give it. it plus four, plus two, so it's a seven-seven. So it attacks for seven, deals damage, gets pumped to eight. You've done ten. That's only eighteen damage. I count. Wait, hold on. Nothing you said made any sense, right? Like, so you attack on turn two. It's a two-two. It deals one damage though. So they're at nineteen. Sure. So on turn three, you attack again, but it's not going to get the counter until the combat. So you're plusing it. You're giving it plus four, plus two. So it's a six. Yep. You're dealing six. That's seven damage total. Okay, so another at 13. Yep. It gets another counter, so it's added to seven. Mm hmm. So, right, it's a seven. Oh, we're not accounting thud? for its second ability. So, thud deals seven oh. damage, and then it dies, and it deals seven. Okay. That's actually not 
And that's yeah, how far off in those a, colors. Yeah, it's in, it's a, in those colors, too. Yeah, that's something. I think the card's... Like I said, I think the card is fine. I mean, if you attack with this under everything else on turn two, it's a 2-2 two, two for two at the worst. On the play, this card's probably very good. Oh, I thought you didn't like it at all. I don't think it's terrible. Weird. I, li I like this like, card. It sounded like you thought it was terrible, Robert. I, you hated it. It did sound like you hated it. <laughs> uh, Elite Guard Mage. Two and a white and a blue for a 2-3 flyer. When it enters the battlefield, you gain three and draw a card. I don't dislike this because of that ability. Yeah. It's a baby Cloud Boy. Uh, Cloud Blazer was gaining two life and draw two cards, but it cost five and it was a 2-2. Two, two. Mm -hmm. This is a 2-3 for one less mana. You gain life, draw three. And it's a wizard. It's actually... F I don't think this is bad. Mm -mm. I would play this card in sideboards against red decks. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, in limited, I'm 100% playing this card every single time I get All day, every but, day. But like in standard, like... Is Naban a thing? It blocks, it gains three life, it draws you a card. Like, I think that's fine. With Naban, it gains six, draws two cards. Who's that? Naban's the legendary wizard. That, uh, it, the two Panharmonicon. The Panharmonicon. Mm-hmm. Are you thinking, are you thinking of Naru, Narumiha? No, no, that's the wizard lord. That's the one that pumps all the dude, all the wizards, one, one. Naban is a two, one for two, that whenever, if a, if a wizard would ETB... It doubles the trigger. It's a panharmonicon for wizards. Okay, I'm going to enter the God Eternals right now, so we're going to... Let me see it. Two blue blue and a black. Uh, enter the God Eternals. Does four damage to a creature. Gain life equal to the damage dealt this way, which I assume is four. Why? It's just like, why does it say gain four life? It's very weird. <laughs> that is really it's weird. A weird. It's a weird way to Why put would that. you do that? That is so weird. I guess because if they prevent the damage, you don't gain it. Sure. But I mean, that's a weird distinction. Like, you could just have them gain it anyway. Mm. It changes the... It, it's functionally different, but like, the situations where it matters are... are it's it seems few and far between. Target player puts the top four cards of their library into the graveyard, and then amass four. So you make a four four, you deal four, you gain four, and you mill four. This does a lot of things. And you get a four four. So let's say there's a four four creature for five mana that deals four damage when it comes into play to another creature, right? Mm -hmm. Like a flame tongue kavu for one more mana, that is a four four instead of a four two, and you gain four when it comes into play. Like that seems very good. I like this card a lot. I think this card's very strong. Correct. Okay. I Again, like, there's another just random mill the top four cards tacked onto it, and I'm not sure why. That way you can get rid of their gods. You keep saying that, but I don't I think... I keep that's... saying that. I said that once. You said it last time because you read it. Right. I was just joking. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just a weird, like... It's just a weird... What's this? This is the Feather. The Redeemed. The Feather card? Red, white, white for a 3-4 <laughs> flyer. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, it's... Being called Feather, I expect it to be a bird. But it's not a bird. Yeah, you're right. It's an angel. I thought it was a bird. I didn't Especially because of the wings. I'm like, a bird? No, it's just an angel. All right. It could be an angel bird, but it would say angel bird. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets a creature you control, exile that card instead of putting it into your graveyard as it resolves. So I'm going to be here, plus two, plus two. I will exile it as it resolves. If you do return it to your hand at the beginning of the next end step, so end of my turn, I get the card back. Eh, it's interesting. So with Defiant Strike, that's just really good. Are you asking me if angels have feathers? I don't understand your question here. I mean, you're right. They do. That's not the point, though. The point is, if it's called, fe I guess, I guess angels do have feathers. That's a good point. Mm. Hmm. I mean, to be honest with you, it kind of looks like a bird more than it looks like a person. That's what I'm thinking, right? Yeah. I'm saying that's what I'm saying, dude. Yeah. What do you What do you think of the card, though? I think this card that this card is a whole new archetype that just starts getting played now. This card's very good. I mean, three mana for a three-four flyer is great by itself. The ability is great. You don't, you're not counting. I was tell asking. That's not even a thing, mossy bread. But, um, so, one thing I don't like about this card is it forces you to play a bunch of spells that target your own guys that are usually pretty terrible. Like, I'll give plus two, plus zero, and you're like, alright, whatever, man. It's play it forces you to play pump spells, which are generally pretty bad. They're bad because they, they, you, they're a one-shot deal. This, this keeps them in your hand. This, what if they kill this in response? You don't target it, you target the other dude. It says creature you control. Correct. What if you kill this in response, though? Then right. you cast, then you right cast right Lazatub's Plating. And give it hexproof. Lazitov's plating. Yeah, and then you give it hexproof. Is that a real car? Yeah, that's the one I said it was. You said was better than dive down. Lazitov is that Lazitep? Lazoteps. Imhotep. So now you're playing blue, white, white, red. Yeah, it's a good deck, man. This card is good. I think it's fine. I definitely think it's fine. Uh, I don't like what this strategy implies, where you have to like right because you're relying on these on small creatures essentially please explain this card i too dumb <laughs> so whenever you target it or a permanent you control a creature. creature you control instead of that card going to the graveyard you just get it back at the end of the turn so it puts the card right back in your hand you get to keep casting it 
Right, but not in the same turn, obviously. Yeah, next step, instead. For obvious reasons. Yeah, it's fine. Gleaming Overseer. Um, whenever you cast the instant sorcery spell that targets a creature you control, XL card instead of putting it into your graveyard. No, so if, if they if they target a creature and you kill the creature they target, it doesn't it goes to the graveyard. Like that spell doesn't resolve. So you said it happens even if you kill it in response. It doesn't though, because this this is um instead of putting it in your graveyard as it resolves, it doesn't resolve if, if that happens yeah, because fizzles. it gets countered. Spell fizzles. So like they can still kill the creature you're targeting. And real quick, uh for everybody that's saying about Lazatep plating out working or coming back to your hand, I, I was saying that as a joke because earlier on the last video, if you check this out on YouTube, we were going back and forth about dive down and Lazatep's plating. So he was saying the one, I was saying the other. Cool story, bro. Thanks, dude. That was a really cool story. You know what's really cool? The card after this one. Gleaming Overseer? No, no, the card after this one. Oh, we'll see. One. Oh, I bet it is. I want to peek, but I don't. One blue black for a 1 4 when it enters the battlefield to mass one. So you're getting a 1 1 and a 1 4. The zombie tokens you control have hexproof and menace. I just wanted you to skip the card. I don't know what's next. Oh, <laughs> wow. That's messed up, man. Eh. Okay. Eh, it's all right. Two, I don't actually know if it's all right. Maybe I thought this was something else. Two and a red and a white. Discard all the cards in your hand, then draw that many cards. Plus one, you gain life, you have number cards. Yeah, it's all right. This looks like a biblical Four mana's painting. Four man is a lot. It, it looks like a Renaissance painting, yeah. yes. Um, But that's cool. So, Kithian had known war every day of his life. Now he finally knew peace. Man, this set's sad, dude. He's like, I love you. That, which is fine. Bro. We're done here. All right. I mean... That's all right. That's such a weird card. It doesn't do anything. What? It doesn't. There's. It's rare that I want to discard every card That's in my weird, hand. It's such a weird card. Like, if I have three cards in my hand, I usually want to keep one, but then I have to get rid of all of them. I mean, you're breaking even because you're drawing one plus. So you're get, getting rid of this and three cards to draw four different cards. And you gain four life, so that's cool. But, like, <laughs> they just ran out of ideas for new Gideon cards. Hoatley's Raptor. White, green for a 2-3 Vigilance, when it enters the battlefield, proliferate. Again, this is fine for a 2 3 for 2 with, with Vigilance and Proliferate. Like, that's a lot of abilities. Mm -hmm. If in a deck that wants this, the enters the battlefield, proliferate is nice because it's cool early, but it's also cool late. So, yeah. Invade the city. One red, blue, a mass X for X is the number of instant sorcery cards in your graveyard. I don't like these cards with just a mass because I don't like the way a mass is worded, where, like, if I have a 2 2. It gets plus four, plus four, and that's yeah. just not. There's no value. I don't want to. I don't want to spend a card, is, a whole card, to get plus four, plus four. This is a bad. This is a bad version of um. What's the one that costs six? That you get a two-two zombie for each one in your graveyard. If oh. I could choose whether to make a new token or whether to add to a token, that yeah. would be great. That would be sweet. But I really, I'm kind of not liking the fact that it has to be one or the other, or just has to be one rather, not even or the other. This card's boop. Ninety five percent of these cards suck. I disagree. Uh Leyline Prowler, one black or green for a two three. Three mana for a two three with death touch and lifelink. Very vampire nighthawkish. Mm -hmm. Although instead of flying here you have add one mana of any color. Again, adding one mana of any color Big deal. just feels very strong. Like especially in a multicolor set where there's a bunch of different options. Hey, you can actually get get it off your it all it's also fetchable off the um the trigger from Niv. Because it's, it's Golgari colored. Correct. Yeah. I Yeah, this was another card I was considering playing um, because it adds one mana of any color, which I think is very strong. Mm -hmm. um, maybe, it, maybe it should be in there. I don't know. Maybe. I have Chromatic Lantern as my three mana uh, fixing spell because yeah, but obviously... Yeah, Chromatic just, Lantern, what it's doing is just better it's, than this it's, card. It's so much better because yeah. it, it lets you play it off of five mana mm -hmm. no matter what. Mm -hmm. uh, Living Twister. Uh, f red, red, green for a 2-5. Three mana, 2-5. Two, two mana, discard a land. It deals two damage to any target, which is pretty good. One green return a tapped land you control to its owner's hand. So it lets you like pull up lands from your from your it, it twisters the lands up, it uproots them, and then you get to deal two damage to anything with them. Um with a card like Life from Loam, it's pretty you don't think this is constructible? Mm -mm. Even as a two five for three mana? Nope. Interesting. Mm -mm. You have to pay two mana for it. I mean it's I'm yeah, but all that aside, like it's still You're really gonna play a two five? I don't care what the cost was. Even if you had a one drop that was a two five, I I I mean Like Pernicious Dude says, look at that butt, dude. Look at that butt. Anyway, I don't think it's terrible. Mm -hmm. Um It says tapped because you pay the mana to activate it. Well it's not why I mean it doesn't have to be. That's it not why, tapped, but I mean though. I don't think that's a But it's weird it's a weird it's a weird uh it's a weird restriction, right? Because it's you just, you can just tap a land if you want to. So they're just forcing you to do a thing. 
that you don't have to do. But you can do in order to pay for itself to meet its own restriction. It says tap because people are trying to bring back from the graveyard. That doesn't make any sense. Like you can't, you don't control a land in your graveyard. I don't think anyone was doing that, especially where when the set isn't even out yet. <laughs> that doesn't even make any sense. Who is who are these people that were doing that? It can return Tabernacle if it's tapped. R right, but like I don't think they're like let's not let's make him unable to return Tabernacle because it doesn't it never taps. No, they don't. I was just... Oh, in testing. Oh, in Wizards R and D testing, they were trying to return lands from their graveyard. Makes total sense. <laughs> yeah, that makes total sense. Uh, they want you to feel the pain from your city of brass. Okay, now we're getting there. Now we're getting to the bottom of it. Yeah, I feel Your like... Mana uh, Confluence. That's what Mar Mar Mark Rosewater actually said that? That doesn't make any sense. You don't control a land in your graveyard. Right, like returning... That, saying that doesn't return make sense. a land you control to its owner's hand? That, that, that does not work. That's not a thing. That's so weird that they would have to put that clarification on there. I would love to read that. Je Genesis Project, if you can... If you can... If you have a link to that, I would love to read that because that sounds hilarious. Uh, Mayhem Devil 1, black, red. Whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, Mayhem Devil deals one damage to any target. That's another dude. That's another with, aristocratic yep. dude. With Judith this, and Judith colors. Oh my god, the Mardu deck seems like it's gonna... Like, the Mardu deck feels like it was already pretty strong, but... It could have been, but it was it was a little short. But a, a two-mana, another two... Like, a Blood Artist effect is pretty good. And like I said, Bantu... When the Bantu God comes into play, you sacrifice you know five things you deal five damage here on top of if you have another one and that's 10 damage to any target and you just draw another x amount of cards you know what i mean my god what a time to be alive they made it tap land to make it clear that it had to be in play in in play land an original ring just said return a land right but you can't return a land that's not in play yeah that doesn't make sense all it has to say is like the only way it would return work for the graveyard it would literally have to say from your graveyard like you can take out tap then it says return a land you control to its owner's hand in order to control something, it has to be on the battlefield. Like, that's very yes. clear magic. Yeah. The only way you right? can ever return... They can like, when Merfolk Skydiver enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you so control. When it dies, like, you don't get a 1-1 creature. What? Or 1-1 one, one counter. I thought that's where you are going. My point is that you can't put the 1-1 one, one counter on a creature in the graveyard. Oh, yes. <laughs> because you don't control it. <laughs> I went the other way. Like, it that. seems very obvious. Like, yeah. it seems like an obvious... That that if you the only things you control are the things that are all in play as permanence. Uh, anyway, it's a 1-1 one, one flyer for 2 mana... When it enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 counter. So it could be a 2-2 flyer, and then you get proliferate. This card's fine. It's okay. Um, Gaia's Skyfolk was also a 2-2 white, uh, blue-green merfolk. You, you know Gaia's Skyfolk? Uh, oh, it's God, I love it's that. literally I love that a 2-2 for 2 uh, merfolk with merfolk, elf merfolk with flying. And this is actually just better because you put the counter on it, and you, have, and you have the proliferate, or you can put the counter on something else. Um, so this is almost just, it's not strictly better because it enters as a 1-1, one, one, so they can kill it with something that deals one damage. So not strictly better, but it is better in, in a lot of ways. So Kind of love that card, card border. Uh, Neoform, oh, green and a blue. As initial cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature. Search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to one plus the sacrifice creature's converted mana cost. So I can sacrifice my Hunt Master of the Fells to get my Thrag Tusk. Uh, put that card on the battlefield with an additional 1-1 one, one counter on it, and my Thrag Test will be a 6-4. So, seems fine. This card's pretty good. This is just a better Eldritch Revolution. Neoform and the, <laughs> the simulation emote. Nice. <laughs> nice. Oh, here's your boy. This is your boy. Tybalt, not your boy. Nicobolus, your boy. Here's your boy. Nicobolus, Dragon God. Blue, black, black, black. God, he just keeps adding black mana symbols to his casting cost. Next, next set will be four black. Black, 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 Is he black, dead? black. He could be. I don't know. I don't know any of this. Okay. Four black, black, black gr blue, black, 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 red. He looks like Ugin. Uh, Nicobolus Dragon God has all loyalty abilities, all other planeswalkers on the battlefield. That's pretty, that's crazy to me by itself. Um, you Plus one, you draw a card. Each opponent exiles a card from their hand or permanent they control. Um, again, we were talking about how plus one to draw a card is just very, very good. Plus one to draw a card and also make your opponent exile a card from their hand or oh, and permanent. We Karn, and we Karn plus. It's just very good. <laughs> Negative three, destroy a creature or planeswalker. Also just very good, very subtle. You're just like, or not very subtle, but very clear. You're just very like, I'll just kill this. Just yeah, that, that's gone. And then I'm going to untap with my bolus. Negative eight, which means you only have to proliferate four times, which the green card does. Negative eight, each opponent who doesn't control a legendary creature or planeswalker loses the game. The static ability doesn't feel like a magic card. It feels like a Momor Vague ability or something. It's something ridiculous. That I just agree. Should, it's very cool, though, because I don't think it's really going to... It's not... There's it's, not that many... 
it's too dependent on other things to be broken, but it's just an awe-inspiring ability to see on a card. Yeah, right. It's right. It's too dependent on other things. Like, there's no situation where your opponents are going to have so many planes. You still get to activate one loyalty ability a turn. It's not like you're activating it three times. Yeah. But, um... So, wait. Ugin... Uh, Ugin... Are they really their brothers? Ugin and, and Bolas? I was literally saying that I think... I don't know. I think they look identical. Aren't they identical? Are they brothers? I thought they were just... Op opposites opposites attract like the Paula Paula Abdul song never heard it wow there's multiple people saying yes so I would wow that's fascinating I didn't know that fascinating uh, alright so next yeah this card's great this card's phenomenal uh, as Worth long as you can tag. deal as long as you can deal with the um, what's the price he going for 30 31. I'm gonna check out cool stuff and if you guys use promo code frank5 you'll get 5% off yeah, thirty-two dollars. Oh my god! So you can literally get it for thirty dollars. You could just play Nicol Bolas and then next turn play uh, Liliana Dreadhorde General. Like that seems like a strong series of plays. Grixis always has what seems to be the strongest cards. It just can never bring them together. Is the problem? Jace on turn four, Nicol Bolas on turn five, Liliana on turn six. Oh, so you want to draw six cards? I want to draw a million and then cards. put four back. This is my favorite card in the set. I'm not going to say it's the strongest card in the set, but it's definitely my favorite. Why are you Why are you shaking your head? I was uh, had something in my. Oh, you got a little neck. Yeah, yeah that's cool, man. It's you got happens. a little neck. No, you got a big neck. I was going to say a little neck issue. Oh no, I wasn't actually commenting on the size of your neck, just the the, the neck issue that you had. Oh, thanks, dude. And uh, Niv Mizzet reborn, white, blue, black, red, green for a six six flyer. Five mana for a six six flyer. What else do you need? That's awesome enough. All right. Oh, no, just kidding. We're going to go back to this card because it's insane. <laughs> when Niv Mizzet Reborn enters the battlefield, for each, reveal the top 10 cards. So it's kind of dig through timey, revealing 10 cards. Uh, the only difference is it's not look at the top 10 cards, it's reveal, so everyone gets to see. You spread the top 10 cards out. Um, for each color pair, so Azorius, uh, Golgari, Is It, etc., choose a card that's exactly those colors from among them. Put the chosen cards in your hand and the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. So, depending on how you build your deck, um, you could draw, theoretically, in a, in a hypothetical, hyperbolic situation, 10 cards. You could draw 10 cards off of this. In a perfect, perfect situation where you draw all the cards that you hit. It's never going to happen. Uh, statistically, it is very, very unlikely. However, it is possible. I think most likely you're going to end up drawing three or four cards with this. Uh, depending on how you build your deck... Um, but I like this card a lot. I already brewed a deck with this, a preliminary deck. I plan on it's, you can check it out. My, the articles up on coolstuffinc.com. It went up this week. Definitely head over there and leave a comment in the article if you like it, or if you have any ideas, I'd love to hear your comments. And, um, I'm also going to play the deck that I, that I wrote about in the article this Tuesday that, uh, on the, the early access streamer event, uh, for, for war of the spark that wizards of the coast invited me to. So thank you very much. Wizards of the coast. Really appreciate that. And uh, I'm looking forward to that because the deck seems sweet. And uh, even if it sucks, it's okay because we had a good time. It's uh, it's yeah, it's like literally the first day of the set, and I just want to play some cool cards. We'll make it work, man. Oh, we'll, we'll make we're, it. Work. We're gonna work together. We're gonna make it work. Oath of Kaya, one black or white. Sometimes I get, sometimes I get stuck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When yeah. Oath of Kaya is red, I feel it deals three damage to any target, and you gain three life. I like this already because immediately there's a legendary enchantment for three mana. It comes down and it lightning helixes something. Any target, planeswalker, player, whatever. Whenever an opponent attacks a Planeswalker you control with one or more creatures, it deals two damage to them and you gain two life. That's pretty good. Yeah. Especially against, like, mono red decks. This card seems great. This card seems great. Um, yeah, this card seems awesome. And it's like... It's like if you go moment of craving oath of into oath of Kaya, that's just I mean that's just backbreaking. You you gain five life, killed two of their dudes, and if you play a Tefri, whenever they attack, you gain two life again. That's just backbreaking. And like the triggered ability, whenever component attacks, is great. But the fact that it does it does have a lightning helix on it is really right. strong. Everything about this card it is incentivizes great. me to play more than one. Like I'll play yeah three lightning helixes in my deck. Dude, you could literally have three of these three of these in your sideboard for when you know you're playing that mono red and you're just good to go. You're it's just, nice because the legendariness of it. Does doesn't actually affect you. It's not like, oh, I drew two of these, they're dead. Right, you can't I'll just play one. one. No. Shoot your play shoot your face or your planeswalker and then play the yeah, other. I'm gonna gain another three here right. and then I have the same effect. Yeah, this is this is why is this not main deck? This is definitely main deck. I actually just saw this card now and I might actually add it to uh, this wasn't I don't know if this was revealed at the time that I wrote the article, but I could definitely see adding one or two of these to the deck if yeah. I can find a spot to it. Pledge of Unity, one green, white. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on each creature you control. Gain one life for each creature you it's control. not the worst card, honestly. At instant speed, it's definitely not. Yeah, because it's instant speed. It's not the worst. I mean, if, you have, if you're looking for an effect like Unbreakable Formation or Radiant... Uh, 
fountain? No. The plus one plus one. The enchantment. Radiant. I can't think of it. The one that the vampire cards played. The vampire decks played. Anyway, you guys know what I'm saying. Um, this card is just fine. It also gains oh, you some Oh, the life. enchantment. The, the three Correct. mana one that you select a card type? Yes. Oh, God. Now you're going to bug me what I that know. was. Radiant, Radiant Destiny. Destiny. Nailed it. Uh, yeah, this card seems fine. Put a 1-1 counter. And then you can proliferate them, which I think is great. So, very very cool. Very cool. Ral Storm Conduit. We have a 4-mana, four 4 loyalty Planeswalker. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery, which is which is relevant because there's been a lot of spells in this format that have copied things so far. Uh, Ral deals 1 damage to target opponent or Planeswalker. So, actually, that's, that's a lot of work to deal 1 damage. I'm like, you have to copy something. I guess if you cast it too. Or you cast. Yeah, that's actually not bad when you consider all the one and two mana spells in like the Is It decks. Uh, plus two is a scry one, so four mana, or you know, goes up to six, starts at four, scry two, your scry one goes up to six. Negative two, when you cast your next instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy it, you may choose new targets for the copy. That's, isn't that bad? It's okay. I mean, it, it, is, it is an infinite combo in standard. Being able to copy any spell for free just by negative twoing him is very very strong. Yeah, I mean especially in like you're plusing him up to six. I think this this is good. I think this is good. I think it's good. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling good about it. I agree. All right, I'm gonna go to the next one. Yep. Ral's outburst. This is good. Two, blue red. Uh, it deals three damage. It's an instant. It deals three damage to any target. Look at the top two cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and the other into your graveyard. This is basically a mini uh, prophetic bolt, right? Instead of dealing four, it deals three. Instead of looking at the top four, you look at the top two. But it's basically deal three damage, draw one card for no, four this, mana. This card's great. Yeah, I think this is good. This is a really good card. And uh, it is instant, which is relevant. I don't want to play this at sorcery speed. But, like, yeah, having one or two of these in your deck and just being able to cast them. It's any target as well. So, again, not just a creature. You can do it to the face. You can do it to the uh, planeswalkers. You can hit any target. Hit yeah. whatever you want. Creature. Hit whatever you want. So, the card's great. Uh, if the target is removed, you don't get the card. That is true. But, I mean, that's that's true for a lot of things. Rollesque Apex Hybrid. This card's weird. Like, why is this mythic? Two green, green, blue for a 4-5 Flying Trample. 4-5 Flying Trampler is great. But we've had 6-6 six, six, six Flying Tramplers for one less mana. And then when this guy enters the battlefield, put two 1-1 one, one counters on another creature you control. And then when it dies, proliferate, then proliferate again. So, you proliferate twice. So it's putting two more counters on something when it dies that already has counters on it. Yeah. I don't know, man. Like, it's just, it feels like I'm looking at the card. I'm seeing that it's mythic. I'm seeing four or five flying trampler. I'm seeing two abilities. And I'm feeling like, is it doing something I'm not getting? This is a Simic card. This is, your, this is they literally just crap on Simic. Simic never gets I mean, anything great. Proliferate for, for, for like all your planeswalkers could be cool. Two proliferates is nice. Simic has come to the point, it's like they, they try so hard. And got to so far. To create a Simic card that is actually playable, and, but also fits into this realm of what it has to be because it's Simic, and it's just it's just always like someone threw up on a card. The thing that gets to me it. is that this card tried like so hard, and it got so far. Yes. But like in the end, this card matter. didn't even matter. It didn't matter. <laughs> it didn't matter. I couldn't get and, through and, it. And it had to it. fall to proliferate twice. To to yeah to, to put lose it all. It oh fall. god. And, and in the end, it didn't matter. It didn't even matter. Because there was no creature on the battlefield. Roll, there was nothing with, with counters to proliferate. There was nothing. Roll <laughs> reversal. Blue, blue, red. Exchange control of two target permanents to chair permanent type. Cool. I don't think this is bad. I, I don't either. I you wish it was tokens. an instant. Can you imagine if this is an instant, though? It should be an instant. End of turn, switch our planeswalkers. Yeah, let's switch it. Yeah, switch it. All right. I mean, it's good. It's switcheroo, but switcheroo can only hit creatures, and switcheroo is five mana. This is three mana, so we're a little bit better there. But again, it's also is it, so, you know. Mm. Anyway, I got the reference. Nice. <laughs> nice. Rubble Belt. What are you doing? Are you listening into the mic? I was. What is that you do? <laughs> Rubble Belt Rioters. One green red for an 4 I don't feel like a green red creature should never have zero power. Just never. <laughs> That's haste, true. Haste. When Rubble Belt Look at Rioters. this idiot. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> wh idiot. why? Why? When it when it attacks, it gets plus X plus O until end of turn. You make it a 1-4. Is it really that overwhelming if it's a 1-4 and you're giving it plus X? I'm, No. When where X is the greatest power among creatures you control, so like, I don't like creatures like this that are only as big as my best thing because then I'm just like, oh no, I have two best things. Oh hey, nice fibble fit, I'm one four. All right. Anyway, Solar Blaze. This is the card we we're talking about. Uh, 
I guess the solar blaze is shot by the Parhelion. It is. That's interesting. Yeah, what's interesting yeah. is now we see more of the Parhelion, okay. and it looks just as stupid. <laughs> it's like it's like breaking in half. It's, it's like, this is how I... It, it literally gets to fire the solar blaze one time, and the Parhelion just goes down. That's it. It's that's, like, that's oh, the we, lifespan. we really shouldn't have had to, to, to really <laughs> separate our vehicle in order to fire this. It's like, <laughs> separate our vehicle. <laughs> We just got to end it, boys. It's like in order for your car to shoot a weapon, it has to split into two. It's like in half <laughs> through the center. That's funny. Uh, each creature does damage to itself equal to its power. This is a fine sweeper, but the problem with this is like you want to know what matchups you're playing it against. Like it doesn't kill Aurelia. It doesn't kill like two threes, two fours, four feather. fives. It doesn't kill Feather. Like there's a lot of cards that it just won't hit. And uh, depending on what, you, what you're playing against, like you just – it could just literally be a blank in your – in your main deck, so Solar Blaze is the reason that we want the two five land guy. <laughs> Actually, Solar Blaze would have been fitting if we did our, our review yesterday because you could have four twenty Solar Blazed it. You could have, and now you got a four twenty one Solar Blaze it, and yeah, that's it's just, just not as good. It's yeah. just not as worse. The, the flavor it's not is not as terrible. Good. Not as worse. I said it does not hit Wild Growth Walker. That's true. Yeah, it doesn't. Oh, it, this the Robo Rider survives the Solar Flare. It's oh, that's why. It yep. doesn't even get hit. It doesn't even deal itself damage. Cook, cook, combo. So that's good. You actually, in your Rubble Belt Rioters deck, you can go turn three Rioters into turn four Solar Blades. It's the Naya Rioters and deck. And you basically can't lose. It's the Naya Rioters deck. Soren, Vengeful Bloodlord, two black white for a four loyalty Planeswalker. As long as it's your turn, creatures and Planeswalkers you control have lifelink. Uh, plus two, Soren deals one damage to target player or Planeswalker. I keep reading this and I'm like, that's so stupid. That's it? That's so not even two. Um, like, but, what about Soren's thirst? Like, it's not even two. It should be two. But it deals. You gain one life as well. So dumb. Negative X. Return target creature card with converted mana cost X from your graveyard to the battlefield. I like that. That creature's a vampire. I mean, you like that for the same reason I like that, and that's because it's just nothing else on the card. Because it's, no, because it's reanimate, right? <laughs> yes. I like reanimate and stuff. Um, but the problem is like. At four, at four loyalty, I'm not impressed. I want to plus two this guy and then negative like five or six him. And then at that point, I'm like, should I just play a reanimate spell because it survived? Because then I don't because then I don't have to deal with all this rigmarole to get through this planeswalker. Rigmarole. That's good. Anyway, I, I, I don't love this Soren, which is sad. Sorens are always hit, his miss, hit or miss. Like six mana black mono black Soren is not great. Six mana black white Soren is great. So, I'm just listening. I know what you're doing. Okay. You know, anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> anyway. Soul Diviner, blue, black. Um, Your eyeshadow is, is better than, than my eyeshadow. Yeah, it's, it's true. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Two, three for two. Um, Remove a counter from an artifact creature or land you control draw. I like this a lot, actually. This card seems really good for a two, three. In the right, in the right deck. Like, yep. if they go to kill anything, um, it also does remove a counter from the blast land. Oh, the uh, the so chalice tokens. You can also take like a counter off a of chalice the void. Like if you have a chalice the void on like two and you need to be on one, like you take a counter off that. Like there's a lot of things you can just take counters off with this, which is pretty nice. Um, but it's just drawing a card for it as well. It's not just like an ability to remove a counter and that's the that's the effect. Like the effect is drawing the, the drawing the card is also relevant. Yep. So. Uh, Storev Dev Devkarin Lich is a card I really, really like. Uh, one black, black, green with trample for a 5-4. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker, return to your hand target creature or planeswalker in your graveyard that wasn't put there this turn. The trample is really nice on this because it kind of makes sure you can get through. Uh, and it's also a 5-4 trampler for 4. This reminds me a lot of uh, Golgari Finebroker. Mm-hmm. And being able to just return a creature or a planeswalker. Easier casting cost, too. It's an easier casting cost. It's a bigger body. And uh, it's a repeatable effect as well. Yep. It does die to Lava Coil, but... So does, so does Fire Chicken. That doesn't stop Fire Chicken. Right. Like, this is a card where, like... It does. It's but... The upside of this is worth connecting with. It, it, I'll deal with a, a Lava Coil if I can connect with it. Dies the Solar Blaze. Dang it. The Riders are just better. You're saying this combat. I understand. Yeah. Who's yelling? No, Grizzly Star Wars said this combat. I don't know what that means. Like, yeah, as long as it wasn't put there, this combat you the, get to return. I mean, to your you hand. can have it from from like, turn one, turn five. What it doesn't right, matter. Like, like, it, can, you get to mill it. I I'm mean, attacking with this on turn five. So any creature that died on turn one, two, three, or four, or was discarded, or right. was somehow flipped. Yeah, this card's great, dude. Everything's got mill four cards from your opponent. It's so weird. Mm -hmm. Well, that doesn't matter if it's milling their cards though. No, I'm saying your opponent if they mill. Oh yeah, if they're us. milling us. Yeah. This combat is making this combat is making me thirsty. That's good. That's a solid Seinfeld meme there. Uh, Tamio, collector of tales. 
Uh, two green blue for a five loyalty planeswalker. Spells and abilities your opponents control can't cause you to discard cards or sacrifice permanents. Wow. Tamio, this is Tamio just giving the finger to Liliana. Like, hey, bro, uh, what are you going to make me do? Discard? Sacrifice? Yeah, I'm good. Plus one, choose a non-land card name, then reveal the top four cards of your library. Put all cards with the chosen name from among them into your hand and the rest in the graveyard. This seems extremely unlikely to hit, but on the other hand, it is a plus one ability. And if you have any way to like manipulate the top card of your library, you can just probably draw a card every turn. Uh, negative three, return a card from your graveyard to your hand. Well, yeah, it's also fine. Um, if you remember the F Nissa Vital Force had a negative three, return a permanent from your graveyard to your hand. This is return any card from your graveyard to your hand, which mm -hmm. is not bad. It hits your petitioners. That's true. You are putting the plus one uh, with Tamio. You are putting the rest of the cards in your graveyard. So if you go turn one Tamio or turn four Tamio plus one to put some cards in your graveyard, you're probably going to be able to hit with your uh, your store of. Yeah, that's because, true. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they're just setting us up for the Sultai deck, which that's is pretty sweet. Pretty, pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet, man. That's pretty sweet. Queet it up, boys. Did you mess up because you had something in your trote? I did. I had I had yeah, some, little, I, little I had some trope. I had some in my trote, so I said it's pretty queet. <laughs> Teferi, time raveler. One three are mana. Just, are they just making him look more and more like Idris Elba so that when the Teferi movie, when the magic movie comes out, they you can have just to cast wonder. him? You have to wonder. Because this is what happened with uh, Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel L. Jackson, uh, in the Ultimates line, the Marvel Ultimates comic line, uh, I believe it was Mark Mylar who wrote it. He actually designed Nick Fury to specifically look like Samuel L. Jackson so that when the movies were made, Samuel L. Jackson was just the perfect fit for the, the character. Teferi Time Reveler. One a white and a blue for a four loyalty planeswalker. Three mana friends. Yeah, only that's, three. Yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. Each Let's opponent power. can cast spells only any time they can cast a sorcery. I hope you have a counter for this because if you don't have a counter for this, you don't have a counter for anything. Uh, plus one until your next turn, you may cast sorcery spells as though they had flash. So all the finality cards are good now. Mm -hmm. They're not good. Especially anymore. when you have 12 mana. Negative three, return up to one artifact creature or enchantment to its owner's hand and draw a card. That's nice because you get to bounce anything you want and then drawing a card. Your Kaya's Wrath, you can bounce your Kaya's Wrath. Or I mean your Kaya's uh, Oath, Oath of Kaya? Kaya's Oath. I was like, no, Rob, you don't control that. So you can't bounce a card, you don't control <laughs> But if it's in my, if it's if in it's my, graveyard, my graveyard, you can bounce it. Then I can do it, it. Yeah, yes, for sure. okay. That's a thing. It's a little throwback. <laughs> Hmm. If you weren't here 10 minutes ago, I think just you go all, back and watch. I think you guys all know this card is, is great, and uh, all of these abilities are insane, and Teferi just keeps getting pushed, and uh, I don't think any of us are impressed, or uh, surprised by that, rather. So, 10th hmm. District Legionnaire, otherwise known as Rob's dad. He's boss. I think that's a woman. Otherwise known as Rob's mom. No. <laughs> Two, two for two, white and red. Haste, whenever you cast a spell that targets 10th District Legionnaire, put a 1-1 counter on 10th District Legionnaire. Again, if you're playing the Scry deck, um, this is a reasonable card to have in it. This so. card's great. 2-2 two, two Haste that gets bigger. Yeah, this is great. This okay. is great with Feather. I believe this you. card's really good. I believe you. Yeah, I think this card's fine, especially because Boros is uh, kind of toting itself as the... the the color combination that wants to be targeted and want to play spells and mm -hmm. tricks and things like that. So. Wants to be targeted. Some people just want to be targeted. <clears throat> Some people don't. Time wipe. This card blows me away. Two white, white, blue. Return a creature to you control to its owner's hand, then destroy all creatures. I went into depth about this in another cool stuff up.com article, so you can check that out. And uh, while you're there, use promo code Frank5 to get 5% off your purchase. But um, I talked about how, like, basically when you play Wrath Effects, one thing you want to do is play cards that encourage your opponent to play more creatures. So if you play, like, a Wall of Omens, now they have to play two creatures out to get past your Wall of Omens. So you're encouraging them to play more creatures out so you can get more value off of this. So when you cast Time Wipe, you can bounce your Wall of Omens. Um, yes, you can, you can cast Time Wipe with no creatures on the field because it doesn't target anything. You don't have to have a target for it. You just return a creature you control to its owner's hand and destroy all creatures. Um, then you cast time wipe and you get to bounce like your Lyra like if you play a Lyra your opponent is forced to go so wide in order to deal with your Lyra or to break through with damage that like you're going to be able to bounce your Lyra and wipe the board and this, then next turn you still have a Lyra to play this this, uh, this allows us to uh, to replay our our um, Augur Bolas that's actually pretty sweet because um <laughs> Then you get to look at the top three again and put them on the bottom of your library. And that's all I can really ask for, I think. So Out of a 1-3, Duder for two. 
Yeah, this card's insane. Like, as far as uh, sweepers go, this is one of my favorite sweepers. Oh, in, in that's quite a cool while. interaction. You can bounce the detention sphere. Oh, that's actually good. So they get their, they get they their, get their dude, dude back and, and then, then you kill does. it. That's sick. Tulsimir, friend to wolves, uh, two green, green, and a white. Three, three. Uh, three, three for five. When it enters the battlefield, create a Voya friend to elves. Voya is a, a classic, classic wolf from old school Ravnica. Uh, legendary 3-3 green and white wolf creature token. When a wolf enters the battlefield under your control, you gain 3 life, and that creature fights up to one target creature. So this is actually a 3-3 that makes another 3-3 that gains three you 3 life and fights another creature you don't control. Like, that's actually... This is Huntmaster of the Fells level, I think. It costs 5, but you're getting 6 power, 3 life, and fighting a creature. And it's an ETB effect, so... You can if you can it's, find ways to, to. It's also whenever a wolf enters the battlefield. Mm -hmm. So if you're playing any other wolves, if you have, if wolf you play travel. this on five into Arlen on six, Arlen oh, makes minus? a three three, and then it makes it fights a thing, four fours. and um, Arlen, oh, no, Arlen, Arlen makes a three three. It fights a thing and it gains another three life. Like That's this right. has a lot going on for it. I think this card's actually pretty sweet. Yeah, it's interesting. Tyrant's scorn. I like this card. Blue black. Choose one. Destroy a creature with command of mana cost three or less. Or return target creature to its owner's hand. I don't feel like I've heard about this card at all, but I actually think I this either. card's pretty good. Oh, this card's fantastic. This two mana really to good. either of these effects is actually either on par or better than the regular cost. It is Smother converted CMC or power three or less? Smother. Converted mana cost. Okay, so this is Smother <clears throat> also with... Yes. Um, with, so, with Sun Summon on it. Yeah, this yeah. card's great. For two mana, this card's great. It's instant speed as well. Widespread Brutality. Uh, we have a one black red red. A mass two, so you make a two two. Then the armor you amass deals damage equal to its power to each not each non army creature. That's interesting. Uh -huh. So at at worst, this is like a pyroclasm that you get a two two out of. And at best, four. you make like a four four. You can add. You can you can finally have you can have a four four that deals four damage to everything. Uh -huh. This is interesting because it's basically a black sweeper that deals at least two and at most more. I don't know. This card's interesting. I don't think it's bad. I don't like it because it kills all your other creatures. You have no way to stop it from hitting your other dudes. Sure, but you could just not play that many. Like, if you're playing black-red, you can easily play a black-red control deck with this in it. Sure. And the only creatures you can have would be mass creatures, right? You have to have a, a, other mass spells. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's not. I don't think that's yeah. bad. It won't kill the opponent's army. Yeah, but I mean, like, I'm going to assume there's not going to be that many uh, army creatures in standard. Angrath, Captain of Chaos 2. Black-red, black-red. Creatures you control have menace. Five loyalty, negative two, a mass two. This is not good to me. It's un, it's unimpressive, really. No. Giving your creatures menace is interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't think four mana is worth this. Eh. Mm -mm. eh. If it was five, you would just snap. Say this is junk. Oh, this is this would be I, unplayable. But junk. still, I don't I don't think it's any good. I you're, think you're basically paying for four mana, a two two, and and I mean it's it's no good. I don't think it's any good. And menace on all your dudes. I don't hate it, but I really don't like it. We don't know the power of a mass yet. Correct. That's it. That's it. That's, That's it. I'm out. it. See ya. Ashiok Dream Render. One uh, blue black, blue black. Five loyalty. Negative one. Target player puts the top four cards of the library into the graveyard. Again with the four. Then exile each opponent's graveyard. So all of our all of our plans of like making sure they have creatures in their graveyard are gone. Gone. Spells and abilities your opponent's control can't cause their control to search their library. That's pretty strong. Yep. Like no no fetch lands, no evolving wilds, no search for tomorrows, no primeval titans. That's strong. Field of Ruin. Doesn't combo field of ruin? Each player may search for library. Oh, so if we if we field of ruin them, they can still they can still search because it's not an ability they control. Spells and abilities are part of control. Correct. Yeah. But if they field or ruin us, they don't get a land. They yeah. ghost quarter. For three mana, this is very strong. I agree. And yeah, I mean obviously it's not a main deck card. It's it's situational. Um Oh yeah, if they have like growth chamber guardian, they can't search for the other growth chamber guardians. Mm -hmm. Like I mean, there's just so many search effects. Mm-hmm. And, and graveyard effects. Like, this card's definitely sideboardable and, and standard. I think it's very strong and modern as well. Can you flash this in against Scape Shift? Well, you gotta have something that flashes Planeswalkers. Uh, as Kanta doesn't let you search, neither half of his Kanta lets you search. So no, I don't it think says look at... Uh, it doesn't say search, no. Yeah, this is this card's strong, though. I, this is a good Ashiok. Dovin, Hand of Control, two, and a blue-white. So three mana for a five loyalty Planeswalker. Artifact, instant, and sorcery spells your opponent's cast cost one more. Uh, and then negative one until your next turn prevent all damage that would be dealt to you and dealt by per by target permanent and opponent dealt prevent all damage that would be dealt to and dealt by target permanent and opponent yeah. control so it's basically the Kiora effect yeah Kiora yeah. it's it's Kiora's plus one only it's a negative one here <clears throat> that seems fine it's okay I, I, I want more from this card I do too I, I feel don't like think this it does should have been a rare right. I feel like this should have been a rare with a plus 
Because like that tax effect is really good. going up to six and like. No, well, I don't. I don't mean that. It oh, should you be should a have a plus mana. instead. I see what you're saying. Right. Or in addition to. Right I, I want something more out of that tax effect. Is what I is I. I got you. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I like that card right. a lot, but I mean, if you really think about it, it's it's not that great because you have to kill it. It has to kill itself. I mean, I guess over time, over a few turns, it allows you to. Uh, play ahead of your opponent because you're taxing them every, on everything they're, they're casting. So, well, instant sorceries and artifact, I guess. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think this is this is great. It's not as good as I thought when I first read it. Skip. Huatli, the sun's heart. Let's see if there's finally a good Huatli. Nope, junk. Two and a white green, seven loyalty planeswalker. That's high for a three mana planeswalker. Because it's junk. Each creature you control assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. Okay, so it's just a butt. It's a butt card. It's a butt card. Negative three, you gain life field to the greatest toughness among creatures you control. I think this is fine as a butt card. I don't think it's a good competitive constructed card. However, if you're looking for more butt cards, this then is a then this butt is card. your card. This is your butt card. This You're all about this, this is card. fine. I mean, you play this on three and then... Uh, arcades on turn four and you got your butt deck did you say you want to go to arcades yeah i, I always place? do want to go. i was raised in the arcade my dude uh kaya bane of the dead three white black white black white black seven <laughs> loyalty your opponents and permanents you, your opponents control with hex proof can be the target of spells and abilities you control as if they didn't have hex proof so on turn six you can finally deal with that turn three Woo! guys of saint draft they played jeez uh, you'll be dead, but yes. it's, it's good. Negative three, excel a creature. That's a fine ability. It is, but it's too expensive. Right. Six mana is a lot. Like, Even if you can do it twice, it's just way too uh, late. In limited, it's fantastic. Oh, yeah. I would take this every day. Yep. Uh, because you're going to yep. pay six mana for like a card like Consigned to Dream. To kill something. And this gives you two activations. Yeah. So, um, yeah, card's great, but uh, not for Constructed, unlikely. I, I think six mana is a little too much. Kiora, Behemoth, Beckoner. Two and uh, Simic. Seven loyalty again. These three mana planeswalkers seven loyalty. I like this one. Whenever a creature with power four or greater enters battlefield, draw a card. I like static abilities that lets you draw a card for things you want to be doing naturally anyway. Uh -huh. uh, so I think that's I think that's strong as well. And negative one, untap a permanent. I'm not super excited about that because I don't think the applications are that great. I do because it allows you to ramp into your four your four power dudes. Oh sure, like you can play this on three and then untap a land and play a five drop. Yep. Sure, that's actually pretty good. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. And it's got seven loyalty, so you're drawing into your next key aura before you finish this one. Chris, what's going on, my dude? Yes, I uh, yeah, I got a, uh, I got accepted to Fade to Karma earlier this week, so I was waiting for all the things to finalize. But yeah, I'm on a, I'm on a team now, so that's pretty sweet. This into Simic Hydra. What's the? Oh yeah, nice. Oh my god, hmm. Simic Hydra, the one you don't like. You play this on three. Turn four, you untap a land. She has six loyalty. You play Simic Hydra for a four four, and you get six counters because of the lo six six loyalty counters left. It's a ten ten on turn five on turn four. That's really good. That's Wait, pretty good. Hold on, I'm confused. We'll go back. Let's go back to it in a second. When we f you want to do it now, it's whatever you I don't, want. I can't scroll back. That's okay. like three hundred cards. Yeah. Uh, Nahiri Storm of Stone. We can just read. It. I'll just open it here, and we can just yeah, read it let's, again. Let's look at it real quick. Um, it was like the third card. Bio Essence Hydra, five mana for a four four. It enters the battlefield with a one one counter for each loyalty counter on planeswalkers you control. That's really good. So and you do it on four. That see, that's really good. That's what I'm talking about. That's really good. And it's a trampler. It's it's basically deal with it immediately. And it also says whenever one or more loyalty counters are placed on planeswalkers you control, does that include casting them? If I cast a planeswalker with that on play and they get they come into play with six loyalty, I believe so. Yes, because th that's how doubling season yeah. works. That's how doubling season so works. So if I play a six loyalty planeswalker, it gets six extra counters. Oh, I think you undervalued sense. that card. That doesn't make sense. We it have to leave it. It seems a little bit powerful. Yeah, I, I, Mossy Beard says it does, then it has to. He's got a beard. Nahiri's face. <laughs> that is Nahiri's face. Oh man. She looks she got a bad haircut. Storm of Stone. Two and a two Boruses. Uh, as long as it's your turn, creatures you control at first strike and equip abilities you activate cost one less to activate. That doesn't do anything mm -hmm. for me. Negative X, it deals X damage to target tap. That doesn't do anything either. Like, this card sucks. This card's not good, unfortunately. I don't like it. That's why Nahiri's so upset. Like, I'd be upset too if my <laughs> Planeswalker card was this bad. Ah, now we're talking. Sahili, Sublime Artificer. One blue red, blue red. Five loyalty. Uh, whenever you cast non creature spell, create a 1 1 colorless servo artifact creature token. Negative two, target artifact you control becomes a copy of another target artifact or creature. You control until end of turn. Except acceptance artifact. In addition to it, I love this card. This is going to be played in standard. There will be decks built upon it. Um, I think the the static ability of whenever you cast an iron creature spell, make a one one servo <laughs> so is good. very strong. Yes. So good with Karn, like just so good. And 
Yeah, this card's great. Yeah. I uh, I think this card's good. Uh, five loyalty for three mana is also pretty strong. Mm-hmm. And if you play this with Bio Essence Hydra and play, then it's just a, it gets plus five, plus five, which is pretty nuts. So, Samet Tyrant Smasher. Uh, two and Gruel Gruel for five loyalty planeswalker creatures you control have haste. Mm. Negative one target creature gets plus two plus one and gains haste until end of turn. What? Try one. Why does it say that? What target creature gets plus two plus one and gains haste? Because if you use this, it's a negative one. So if you use this as the last, oh, it still gets the haste. last okay. ability. Then it okay. made sure it gets haste. That's you know good. I mean? Okay, that's flavor. I asked that same thing. I was like, why does it say that? It's kind of redundant, right? Yeah. But um, yeah. Then then. Because this is also an interesting plane. Sam, Sam, it's interesting because it's an uncommon planeswalker that has a negative one ability, so you can actually use it until she dies. Mm-hmm. Whereas most of them are like neg two, neg two, and then you're like, oh, you I left just have with a one, one loyalty, yeah. right? Um, but yeah, this is actually, you can also give your opponent's creatures haste, you know, just for the lulls. <laughs> I, Chris, well, uh, well played. Chris is actually a commander player. Backlight's actually a commander player. So that, uh, I was thinking he was just being sarcastic, but that could actually be relevant in commander when you're like, Oh, I could also, if we're playing 2HD, I could give one of your guys haste, too. That's fair. Yeah. So. Vraska, Swarm's Eminence. Two black green, black green for a five loyalty planeswalker. Whenever a creature you control with death touch deals damage to a player or planeswalker, put a 1 1 counter on that creature. I don't okay. like this card. Uh, negative two, create a 1 1 black assassin creature token with death touch, and whenever this creature deals damage to a planeswalker, destroy that planeswalker. So that's just death touch for planeswalkers, then. That seems good. Um. It's not, it's not great. Uh-uh. I don't have to. I don't have to build a deck around Death Touch creatures, mm-hmm. so I'm not really super excited. Yep. Making one one assassins with Death Touch and Planeswalker Death Touch is pretty good, but you only get two of them and they are one one. So I'm like, Meh. they get fork bolded. That's all right. Tezzeret Master of the Bridge is the last card in the set, and it's also the. I believe this is the buy box promo. It says literally buy box on it, so I think I'm gonna. <laughs> I think I'm gonna. I'm gonna make a wager here that it is. Tezzeret, Master of the Bridge, six mana for a five loyalty Planeswalker. Creatures and Planeswalker spells you cast have affinity for artifacts, which is pretty sick. Um, Tezzeret, Master, plus two. Tezzeret deals X damage to each opponent where X is the number of artifacts you control. You gain X life. That's actually pretty strong as well. If you have three artifacts, it's a six six point life swing for plus two. It's a helix, yep. Negative three, return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Also pretty decent. Negative eight, which you can do in two activations. Excel the top ten cards of your library, put all artifact cards from among them on the battlefield. Tezzeret's interesting. I, I don't want you guys to be confused with Planeswalker deck Planeswalkers. The Planeswalker deck Planeswalkers always are always six mana, mm-hmm. and they're always pretty bad, right? Conversely, a lot of the buy a box promos are pretty decent. Like um, Nexus That's of Fade, sweet. and there was another one, wasn't there? Or was the other two just bad? And Pervious Great Worm was one of them, and Pervious Great Worm, the Haunt of High Tower. Haunt of High Tower. I like that card. I don't think it was. I don't yeah. think it was great, but um, the point is, this card's really. I don't good. think this is. I don't think you should dismiss this card. I think giving your. I think this has a lot of things going for it, and uh, I also think that if you if there is any sort of artifact centric strategy, um, this should not be overlooked because this is very strong. This is a strong creature, or a strong planeswalker rather, and. Um, it does cost six mana, but like the plus two, like if you have four or five artifacts in play, like that's that's literally that's a ten a ten point life swing. Pika plan, thank you so much for the resub. Welcome back, really appreciate it. If you guys haven't done so, definitely slam those subscribe and follow buttons on Twitch because uh, I'm streaming five to six days a week, so you guys can definitely check me out. And that's uh, a great way to support. The <laughs> Nexus content. of Fate was indecent, friendo. It, Nexus <laughs> of Fate was indecent. I agree with you, but um, yeah, that's uh, that's War of the Spark. What do you? What was just some of your favorite cards? I love this card, but the problem is there's just not enough artifact artifact support in yet. standard. Yeah, yes. I agree with you. Uh, I love the. Can you imagine this in like Kaladesh standard? Yes, that could, that that's just busted. This card would be insane in that in that. Tezzeret's a man out of time, unfortunately. Um, I like uh the two the two three flyer dude the hate bear for for minor white taxes was just a sneakily that guy's good. sneakily a, a really good card. I think Nicol Bolas and Niv Mizzet are two of my favorite gold cards in the set. I of think course. they're both very, very strong. Yeah. I really did like the Bio Essence Hydra. I think that card's strong. My favorite card in the entire set is the Sahili, actually. That's my really? Favorite. It's my favorite card. That's impressive. Yeah. That's impressive. That's actually my favorite card. Yeah, the set seems sweet. I'm really looking forward to playing with it. I'm looking forward to brewing with it in standard. I feel like there's a lot of, uh, a lot of space to play things, and uh, it seems like there's a lot of things going on. So I'm, I'm really looking forward. It looks like a super sweet set. I think with how a lot of... I mean, recently they've been really a lot better, obviously. But I think the um, they executed the Planeswalker things pretty darn well. Living Twist, Living Twister is probably also one of my favorite cards because you can bring the lands back from the graveyard. Yeah, yeah, the sweet. tapped ones. Yeah, you can bring your the tapped, tapped lands from your graveyard. 
<laughs> Either way, thank you guys. As usual, thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Slam those like and subscribe buttons. You can check me out at meundies.com slash franklapore. You'll get 15% off along with free shipping and free returns. You can also check out manatraders.com. Link is in the description below along with the promo code, and you will get 20% off the first three months of any subscription. Definitely check them out. They have a great service. And you can check me out at coolstuffinc.com and use promo code frank5 to get 5% off all your purchases. As usual, you can find all those links in the description below. Slam the like and subscribe buttons. I will see you guys next time. Thank you see so much it. for watching, guys.